The only people for me are the mad ones. The world is filled with the boring and the barely conscious. The misery loves company. But we don't have to live this way. Jessica and I are here to talk to those the system rejects, to radicals and thought criminals. The ones who never yawn or say a commonplace thing, but push the boundaries of acceptable discourse. Those who stare reality in the face and dare it to be different. History isn't made by the timid, and fun is not had by the perpetually afraid. We are the mad ones. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Mad Ones and Happy New Year. I hey. I hope you had a great Christmas. Mine was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I got everything I wanted. Y- me too. Yeah. I, so. From Santa Claus. <laughs> from it, Santa it Claus. I I found him. So it's Saint good. Nicholas well, I, yeah. saved me in multiple ways. Yeah, she was in a brine. Yeah. She, actually, she was putting someone <laughs> into a brine. Yeah, and I was sold off into marriage, and I was cannibalizing children, and Santa Claus saved me. Yeah, that's that's what. This he's makes for. sense if you've seen our Santa Claus episode, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I I didn't go into who I am or who you are, so uh, mm-hmm. I'm your very ready for this year to come to an end so that we can launch into that feeling of newness and excitement that comes with a new year host, Cam Harless. And with me as always is your probably doesn't care about what year it is because she wishes she could go back to the 12th century where she belongs, hostess, Miss Jessica Green. It's true. Yeah. I'd really like, um, you know, one third of my children to die before the age of five. That'd be... Who ideal really yeah <laughs> Who doesn't and no that? clean water i mean gosh all this clean water is just ugh, yeah clean water is out alive beers in i mean it's a fun time that's right you know they uh they used to ask uh oh how awful you know the life in the middle ages used must have been for people sorry i've been drinking since earlier um <laughs> and i said it really wasn't because they were hammered all the time they really did True. drink beer all of the time because the water wasn't clean so really if you're hammered all the time middle ages probably isn't so bad probably not so bad but <laughs> if you like drinking things that keep you awake instead of downers like alcohol that keep you buzzed and ready for bed i have good news for you we have a sponsor in run your mouth coffee you can get some That's of right. their wonderful uh, bourbon barrel aged coffee and drink it out of one of our mugs by going to run your rymcoffee.com and using promo code the mad ones if you want the mug the mad ones shop.etsy.com we have 14 different mugs of course this is seven different styles of you know designs seven different s- designs on two different styles but it's there also if you like meat you're in the right place uh righteousfelon.com grab some meat uh, some beef jerky, if you will, and uh, use promo code MADONES and get 10% off. People are watching this episode that's totally happening right now on December 29th and not on November 22nd. Um, but the people are watching this in the past because they ha- they're they part of our Patreon, and that comes with exclusive time travel um, bonuses. So they're, they're able to watch this l- live just like you are. That's right. But using a time machine. Uh, so you should go to patreon.com slash the mad ones and uh, join that. But we should talk about who's coming on the show to celebrate this year. Talk shit about Yay. this year. Oh, we I said friends. a bad word. I think that's the first bad word I've said <laughs> in like two months on this show. But that's what we're going to do. So uh, we have two extremely well-loved friends coming on the show today. The first is the Mike Mandy, your favorite anarchist and other malcontents, an entrepreneur, a father of many, and a truly great friend, Dent, a.k.a. Dent in the World. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. I'm doing great. <laughs> Happy <laughs> New Year. Finger <laughs> guns. Thanksgiving. Or, yeah. <laughs> it is December 29th. Whatever it is. <laughs> yes, it's December 29th. <laughs> it, is, it is cold. Yes, uh, burr. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Not but for you, Cam. You're in Florida. It is probably slightly colder than on November 22nd. Yes. <laughs> yes. I can't tell you now, but I'm I'm assuming. But we have another guest, the second friend of the show, 
Uh, the second man you'll see is the other half of Monica Perez's brain, an actor, a comedian, and an absolute smoke show of a woman if you run him through FaceApp, and my favorite Atlantan, sorry, Jessica, Mr. Brad Binkley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good looking chick. I'm a good looking chick. That's for sure. <laughs> happy fifth day of Christmas. Is that what it is? 26, 7, 27. Yeah. Happy fifth day of Christmas. Thank you. Favorite in Lantern, Kim? Yes. Yes. I, I'm All not right. backing down. I'm not backing right. down. I like, I like men. Shots fired I mean, in the 404. All right. <laughs> I'm going to remember that shit. I'm going to remember it. I'm not well, even you... my favorite Atlantan, so. I know. <laughs> I'm just Fuck. saying that if you run Jessica through the face app filter, she becomes <laughs> a toad of a man. I saw I saw app. her face app image. Those things are really confusing, and it's, it's like Twitter is now just one big Maury Povich show where it's like all the models do the walk, walk away, and it's like, guess which one's the transgender? And you're like, shit, I can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> also, um... It's really weird how, as a man, I look exactly like the Hobbit character from The Office. Um, it is it is a dead match. So yes, I yeah. saw that you do. It's, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think a lot of guys are using their picture to get followers on Twitter, like they like are. they're a thirst trap. <laughs> I don't. I can't fault them for it. I have way more followers than I deserve. Like, Cam is definitely funnier than I am and has less followers. It doesn't make any not, sense to there's me. So, there's no way that's true because you're funny like a man, and I'm not even funny like a man. I am funny like a man, but not funny as a man. That's true. I'm just deeply disturbing as a man. Um, but we are that's here true. to true. look at the 2021 in review. So we've got a whole lot of stuff to talk about. Um, How about that assassination? You know which one I'm talking which about. One? You don't have to, <laughs> the one that you happened know, yesterday. The, the the big one that yeah. happened yesterday on December 28th. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy, right? right? Very sad um, place, right? Yeah, Kamala. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crazy stuff. I'm actually looking at like a, a list of stuff that happened over 2021. And you said the assassination. There's like just in January, a bunch of them. So I was like, which one? There's a lot of people got killed this year, like that they just didn't even talk about because there was so much other stuff going on the in the news. The only one I can think of is John McAfee. Yeah. Um, there was the Haitian president. Mm. Yeah. I should say that I love Ka Kamala and I would never, ever do anything like that. Just, oh, she's to, the best. For, just for the feds <laughs> watching right now. She, is she the was the first female president while Joe Biden had a tube in his ass. So <laughs> I true. think... We need to respect that she was the first female president minutes. because Joe yeah. had a tube in his ass. She'll probably be the only president ever to be president while Joe had a tube in his ass. Yeah. Well, I think, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Obama. <laughs> he he probably true. did yeah. have tubes in his ass while Obama was president, <laughs> but we're off to a great start. <laughs> I think probably all of the presidents the last 40 years have been president while Joe Biden has a, had a tube in his ass. Yeah. Can I explain why I'm wearing a tank top so people don't just think I'm normal tank top guy? It's, it's, it's because I'm a bad friend. <laughs> no, you're a good friend. You're wearing a propaganda report shirt. Cam and I are tank top buddies. Yeah. So, uh, very straight. We both like women, but we're tank top buddies. <laughs> And I wore my tank you know, top in honor of Cam, and Cam wore a propaganda shirt in honor of me. I honor Cam and Jessica because it's my the Mad Ones tank top, which is real. Cr it's like oh, I'm in the metaverse, so it's kind of. Um... <laughs> you know who doesn't have to say that they're straight and love women? Straight guys who love women. Really. Love women. <laughs> I'm just throwing that it can't out there. Hurt. I've been hammered since earlier, so. Can I enter every room. Love women. <laughs> You well, I mean, that was true when we were young, but I think things have changed. I do think you have to yeah. make that apparent these days. Hey, by Maybe. the way, women are my thing. Yeah. So get out. Do you guys remember that guy? Um, I am delivered. I'm not gay no more. <laughs> I love women's. I'm, I'm gonna pull it up, and I'm gonna play please it. pull no, that video up. It's my favorite. Is it, thing. Is it Milo came out as straight? Milo Yiannopoulos, yeah. right? Yeah, he, he, yeah. Sodomite, came out as what straight. He calls right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good, I guess good luck to him. He must have dumped his husband and all of that too. Was he married? 
Yeah. yeah. He was. No. Full no. on married for a couple of years too. Yeah. Like, he didn't he didn't trot him around. Like you, you never really saw the guy, but he was married. Yeah. That's um that's sad. You don't like to see a marriage breakup, but no. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's the video. I got the video. I've yes. got the receipts. Let's see. Share. This is this is one of those episodes where things aren't quite as prepared and polished and you're just going to have to deal with it. It's New Year's Eve ish. Everybody be We're just having a party. Yeah. yeah. Drink at home mm -hmm. where you can have as many beers as you want to and no one's going to say anything. Don't punch your Uber driver or do anything crazy to your <laughs> driver. Get a All self driving right. car. No, God. Oh. Do you believe that the Lord tonight has set you free? Yes, sir. Turn around and tell those people. Tell them. I'm not gay no more. I am delivered. I don't like men no more. I thought I like women. Women, women, women. I thought women. I'm not gay. I would not date a man. I would not tear a purse. I would not put on makeup. I would. <laughs> I will love a woman. A woman. What you doing? Oh, loving on my woman. <laughs> I, I gotta say, I, I don't think it works. <laughs> yeah, that guy was not. I wasn't buying it. I wasn't buying it from him. I kind of so feel sorry for him. He did have a, he has a YouTube channel and he catalogs on that channel, his attempts at dating a woman. And Ooh. one of my favorite bits is when he comes home from a date and he makes a YouTube video to tell us all that he touched a woman on her side. And he, yeah. Yeah. He's like, he and I touched her <laughs> on her side. <laughs> I was like, whoa, buddy. Man, Slow those down. people, I would like to give me a fly <laughs> on the wall during the what what whatever the re-education camp they put that guy through because he I think just saw it. Yeah, I, and that was it. That was the completion yeah, of it, the graduation the of it. Yeah. <laughs> and later on in the video, you can tell that the people in the audience did not buy what he was selling because the preacher stopped everything and yelled at them and was like, Look, he's not gay no more. <laughs> like, he's not gay. I'm gay. Everybody in the church is gay. We're not gay. It's like real Superman. confusing church. It's like Superman when he like uh, reversed the power and, and, yeah. and weakened right. everybody else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Superman, his son is bisexual. I know that came out recently. What a oh. what a Yay. wild turn of events that a character that no one cared about came out as gay. I mean, it's yeah. nice how they do that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was funny how they, they ran all the headlines as Superman is now gay. And then you had to click it to read to find out, like, oh, no, it's, it's yeah. like, Su Superboy, I Super guess. Superboy, yeah. yeah. Superboy. Well, I, I was on uh, the propaganda Super report Twink. with Brad when that came when that happened, when that came out. Um, and uh, I remember I was telling him, I think it was on the show, I was like, I think the best part of this are all of those men who have Superman tattoos like ones <laughs> yeah. in different places and then them hearing this news that's hilarious <laughs> so there's yeah this, now um, it's like they're having the earring in your right ear now <laughs> there's this tattoo that people get where it's a it's a character on their arm and then the um arm your hand is connected to the character and so it's like for the rest of yeah. your life, whenever you're jacking off, it's like Mario, Luigi, or Superman is actually jacking you off. It's like this really weird arm tattoo. That I don't sounds, know if you guys. Yeah, no, it or, sounds great. Yeah, it sounds like uh, I'd like to. I'd like to get a tattoo. Um, I want it to look like uh, Super Mario or, or Luigi's jerking me off for the rest of my life. So <laughs> I don't think that's that. like the. Um, I don't think that was the intent when they got the tattoo, but very quickly the internet pointed out to everyone like, oh. From now on, every time you grab your dick, it's like Superman is grabbing your dick. That's pretty gay, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cam, have you thought about getting, you know, um, what's the dinosaur's I name have, from Mario Brothers? Yoshi? Oh, Yoshi. Yoshi. I get a Yoshi. Yeah, uh, jacking me off or yeah. just like a regular Yoshi? <laughs> you get both. Get a Yoshi. 
<laughs> and then get a tattoo do, of a Yoshi. But yeah, like do you do the do the Yoshi, but instead of it being a hand, because you know Yoshi's not known for hands, I could just red out my hand and make it his tongue. That that, that works perfectly, I think. Beautiful. It's a beautiful idea. <laughs> Cam, I'm gonna send you this. Uh <laughs> So I don't know how to put things on the screen, so you'll have to do it. So you okay. said you said self-driving car a moment ago. Have y'all seen that commercial where it's a truck and start driving? I can't even remember what kind of truck, and they just start going. They start they start doing a chant. So it's during college football and basketball season, and so they show all these cars driving around, and they push their self-driving car button, and then they start. Like they're at a, at a football or basketball game and doing the boom, boom, shh, do, as though that's that is the reason everybody has been waiting for is is they wanted to do a <laughs> clap chant. Thank God we have self driving cars so we can now chant in our cars. It's just stomp our feet. Commercial. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Who Everyone doesn't knows want to do that Queen song. While the uh, point of a self driving car is to be able to sleep on your way to work. Right. That's the only reason to have a self driving car, oh, yeah, which yeah, you're not get, supposed to do. No. Yeah. Getting the my seat, uncle back seat with Yoshi too. My yeah. uncle was a huge, huge <laughs> drinker until a few years ago. It, one day he goes, "Man, why the fuck?" Do I? He goes, oh, "I gotta quit drinking." And they come out with these self-driving cars. Like it's the worst time in the world to quit drinking. I thought yeah. it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I just don't trust the those yet. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you trust Elon Musk oh, with your just drunken self? Absolutely not. I don't. I think he is a troll. I think that he is funny. I love his tweet about Bernie Sanders. That was pretty funny. But <laughs> I, I think that he's like, I think he's like playing the role of the outsider guy. But I think he's still just a rich billionaire who probably, you know, isn't as uh, cool as he seems. His SNL appearance. He's so like autistic or so weird. There's just something about him that's strange to me. <laughs> Not oh, that there's anything wrong with that. I'm not saying there's something wrong with it. I'm just saying that he like, I'm serious. He, he just came off as really like a psychopath to me. Yeah. On SNL. Well, what was okay. funny about his, uh, the, the tweet with Bernie Sanders was that he tweeted about that and selling his stocks off. And so then the market dipped a lot when he said that. And then he bought at the dip 1.2 million shares. I want to believe. <laughs> And then, so obviously, he 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 sold six. Uh, how how many billion was it? That he sold six. six. Yeah. And, and so like now that. it's and that's and I, I, someone was doing the math and he was like he made a lot of money. Yeah. Okay, I have to show, just to roll back to the Superman being gay thing real quick. That's the tattoo. Oh. <laughs> Lots of people have this oh tattoo. Oh my gosh! Why? <laughs> That's just so I've right. seen them with Mario. I've seen them with Luigi. I've seen Superman ones, Batman ones. Lots of people have this tattoo. And it's like, hey, you know, from here on out, anytime you grab your dick, it's Superman grabbing your dick. Anytime but, he touches his girlfriend, yeah. it's Superman touching his girlfriend. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's got to bring up a lot of difficult emotions. Yeah. Um, I would yeah, imagine. Got like the, it's like the pimp hand of steel. <laughs> 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 so, um, what else happened during 2021? I brought up a big list of things that we could talk but, about. But what did you report on? What was your favorite? You do the propaganda report with Monica. Yeah. I've done it with you and her this year. So that was a new thing for me, by the way. That was very, very fun. Yeah, it was but cool. Was it was cool to have you on. Uh, uh, you know, it's so hard to like, you're, you're in it and it's so hard to get a bird's eye view while it's going on. I, right now, the thing that's fresh on my mind is the metaverse stuff. I, I find that to be really interesting what they're trying to do and how it folds in with the great reset and with the pandemic where we've all been pushed to the digital world. And now all these corporations are jumping in to monetize it. We have Nike that are, have already got a trademark on Nike stuff. So you try to put Nike on your avatar, you'll probably get sued unless you pay for it. And you have Barbados establishing the first embassy that's going to be operating by international laws in the metaverse and the, the Bitcoin city, all, all of this push by the corporations and all these people that are connected to the great reset, these corporations is, it was like Zuckerberg said, I'm doing the metaverse. Well, let's see what the metaverse is like. And it's just this weird fucking hour and a half video. And then the next day, every corporation connected to the Great Reset is diving in head on. I, I just find the coordination 
And just what they're trying to do is really, really strange. Like they are developing these, these, this haptic, these haptic gloves where they're trying to make it where you can actually feel and touch stuff just so you can put your headset on and never leave your house ever for the rest of your life. Interesting. Sounds great. Let's do that. <laughs> can you feel? Can you feel up your long distance uh, internet girlfriend? I think the, yes, the idea. real question is: yeah, yeah. Can uh, Superman feel up your internet long? Probably. Distance? <laughs> you can probably, and that's what they're going to do. You can. So they showed these videos of it was like, well, if you can't go to a party, you can go to a party in the metaverse. And so you go into the metaverse, and it's a party, and you might think it's other people, but it could just be a bunch of AI developed avatars that aren't even real people and a celebrity's there that you think is like a real celebrity but it's just a an ai avatar that looks like a celebrity and so they showed this person dancing so it was like one person was <laughs> there and then they showed this person's avatar also there so it just looked like a ghost dancing next to them and, and they would like turn into it was very strange and dystopic and I don't know, Monica and I talked about how they ignored the obvious factor where the first thing anybody does with this type of technology is like, how can I fuck it? Excuse my language. But that's what <laughs> happens with it. So yeah. it's just going to be guys just, you know, you, you cut to the guy's house and he's just humping the air or whatever. <laughs> but inside the, the metaverse, he's got, he's got all these banging chicks around him in the metaverse. So what, what initial or what incentive do you have to ever leave this metaverse if they can create a world where you can be better than you've ever been in the regular world, or at least by your own percep perception? I think it's very dangerous. I think there's opportunity, but I just think it's very dangerous. Ready Player One. Have you guys seen or read Re Ready Player One? That's um, basically the world. It's a set slightly in the future, but it's basically a world where the metaverse takes over and most people prefer to exist in that world because they're better in that world than they are in reality. And the economy has entirely collapsed. Uh, crime is rampant. Drug use is rampant. But no one's paying attention to that because they're all existing in this virtual reality. And I don't know if, you know, they took the idea from Ready Player One or not, but they seem to really be trying to enact that. And if you can fly and you can shoot <laughs> laser beams out of your fucking asshole or whatever else it is, in the metaverse, why would you exist in the real world? Why would you try to improve anything in the real world? You know, yeah, and, you can't and fly. Economic opportunities too. Zuckerberg's hiring 10,000 people across the EU and they're encouraging people to learn. So there's this whole learn how to code thing. I think these are going to kind of be combined together where they mm -hmm. have these opportunities for creators to go in and help them build the metaverse. So their entire economic, social, and political life is in the metaverse. We were talking the other day, what is a news, like the mainstream media news in the metaverse? You could probably sit down one-on-one -on -one in a cafe with Don Lemon and he could just deliver you the news, his avatar could, and they could really personalize, or you could go experience the actual story. So if we're doing the Kenosha trial with Rittenhouse, in the metaverse, you might actually be able to just go into a simulation that looks like what actually happened like you're at, at the event but then they could just manipulate the event like they manipulated the images on screen and, and yeah. you would get this like deep emotional uh, interaction that you feel is real because they did these studies where after six months is at the stanford vr research institute something like that uh after six months of giving people these vr experiences they could not distinguish what was real and what was vr wow yeah, it really, crazy. I mean, and take events, sort of like reviewing things that have happened this year, take events like uh, the January 6th, um, oh, whatever yeah. you want to call it, insurrection, riot, whatever the party. various things people call it, party, um, depending on who codes and programs that relived yeah. virtual experience of January 6th, you're experiencing from the point of view of, say, the Congress people who were like hiding in their offices under desks yeah. well, or, you know, the, of Ashy Babbitt going through the window and being shot at. And that's you know, really interesting. Nature. Like yeah. you choose whose point of view you experience it through. That, that's interesting. right. Right. And then depending on who's coding it for you really colors, like, as you were saying, really will color the experience of what yeah. you think happened that might not even have anything to do with the reality of the actual event. Yeah, Can Don yeah. Lemon deliver smells to me? Probably. <laughs> I don't want that. Probably whatever you want, he, he can do. And His schmegma. Oh, yeah. no. Wow. <laughs> that's so many things. Well, that's what he's <laughs> being he can... sued for. Wait, what? You, Don, he's you being know sued Don for Lemon. sexual harassment, yeah. 
Yeah, he stuck his hand really? down his well, allegedly. He stuck his hand down his pants and then like stuck this the stink in some guy's face. Oh, oh geez. <laughs> At a bar. It was not lemony fresh. Yeah. <laughs> Don, yeah. You, you keep saying Don Lemon, and we all know it's Don Lemon. Yeah. Don Lemon, yeah. yeah. Well, wow. one thing I wanted to mention, because you're mentioning, you, you're talking about the Great Reset and corporate and the corporations, which is, we're talking about fascism, economic fascism. But like everyone on Twitter seems to have missed the point, and they're talking about how there's going to be a communist takeover. No, uh, yeah, they seem to miss the point that communists. Communism and fascism are essentially the same thing. It's just uh, tools to to concentrate power. Yeah, it is. That's 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 they they're trying to get that. To me, it seems like they're the whole. Co it is there is a communist tactics are being used widespread. But hardcore. it's going towards economic fascism, right? But it's that's not, what it's going towards. Going, so it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's not and, really even communism right. to worry about. It's it's fat. It's, it's the fascism. fascism. <laughs> and that if it, if communism were natural then the that wouldn't the problem it, then communism would not be you know as big a problem as it is but the problem with communism is you never get past the dictator who takes over yeah mm -hmm. i think the propaganda is so familiar um they i think they've been able to see what has been successful over the decades with communism as far as the propaganda goes yep. but they're not necessarily leading progressives to the progressivism that they think that it is yeah. But they are having success with it because all of a sudden progressives are uh, my favorite saying is progressives are pod pipers for the ruling yeah. elite because they are yeah. bringing yeah. people who are like minded and, and have the same kind of heart to these ruling elites as if yeah. they're going to get what they want. And we all know that they are. Well, yeah, they use the mention, Marxist appeals totally that they, they've yeah. used for, for so long. And, and the people who use it. They don't intend to actually give them. That's why they move the goalpost on the goals all the time. That's why the goals are, yeah. are are utopian because they're unachievable. But they also pull heartstrings. And when you can do those oh, yeah. as uh, oppress versus oppressor, and you're you're the good guy, they're the bad guy. Here's this unachievable dream. You can give them something to always work towards, and you never solve the problem. So you can always use them as uh, an organizational weapon, um, as, yeah. as this the Rand organization called them in this one study. And it's it's. It's mass manipulation. The, the communists said, and I think it was the second communist international conference, they're abandoning their open communist appeals and they were going to do a dual strategy of they, they would be a little softer. Normally, they would run for office and they would use the democratic process to their favor because you, the Democrat people who live in a democracy will let them run for office. But then they were going to do the conspiratorial way, which was they were going to pretend to be Democrats, pretend to be social Democrats and pretend to be socialists. And they're going to infiltrate all their organizations. They they openly said the deception was going to be their main strategy. And it continues to be. Yeah. Well, and, and not to mention, how many people do you know right now? who were talking against big pharma because they were socialists or communists. <laughs> and now they're shilling yeah. for Pfizer and Moderna. This is <clears throat> right. I, they, I think even the communists that we've been afraid of have been duped into fascism. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> but look at the propaganda yeah. though. Look how quickly they yeah. turned from, we hate big pharma. We don't trust them to you better get on board and trust them or you're now the enemy. It's amazing. It's just it, it happens, the, uh, the twist, the, the twist happens on a dime too, because Right before the election of Joe Biden, most of the leftist people or, you know, just like nominally Democrat people were like, well, we know that he's not very good, but we're doing it to get Trump out. Now, all of those same people who months ago were saying, we know Joe Biden is not going to do a good job. We're doing this to get Trump out are going, no, 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 he's doing an excellent job. It, and like you, you have you were the ones telling me that you knew that Joe Biden wasn't going to be a good president. And now you're telling me he's doing a fantastic job. Why do you think he's doing a fantastic job? Name one reason you think he's doing a fantastic job. And it's everything that the corporate media tells them to say. Oh, well, you know, he's implemented this Build Back Better plan, various other things. And I'm like, you, you've turned on a dime. And it was that easy. All you had to do is be told what to think. And you turned on a dime. Yeah, I cannot stand when Biden says what, what I call the Build Back Better plan. It's my Build Back Better plan. He says that all the time. Yeah. And now it, he did not come up with that name. That name, the Great Reset, was calling this Build Back Better long before Biden ever said it. That name was around at uh, EU international level yep. long before oh, yeah. Biden Whole ever world. said yep. it. Yeah, yeah. He's a puppet. <clears throat> sure. Yeah, yeah. And I think that I, I think one of the things that people 
who are into the political world and affecting political change and are want to throw communists from helicopters is really they're the useful idiots. They're the pawns. These people are not getting what they're, they wanted, but they don't even know it. They've been prop propagandized into this other realm. And it, it's very convenient for us to be mad at communists, especially like anarcho communists, when in fact it's the, the corporate elites that we need to worry about. Yeah. Well, on that note, I don't think they know what they wanted. I know that a lot of yeah. people just wanted to get Trump out and they don't even know why they wanted that. But they were willing to do anything they had to do, including, you know, reinstate the very uh, power structures that they've been protesting against for all this many years. They said, oh, give us everything that we've been protesting against yeah. as long as the guy who tweets the mean tweets gets out of here. And that's been wild. And I know this isn't going to win me any friends. Um, we talk a lot about the way that leftists are duped by socialism. They're duped by progressivism. But the same thing happens in conservative circles with libertarians. Sure. The libertarians are um, being rounded up, being told all of these things by their thought leaders, and then being rounded right back into voting for Republicans, right back into the two-party system. And, and I know that doesn't win me any friends to say, but it happens on both sides. And it is happening on both sides. Yeah, and that's why they attack people who are in the middle so much. It, it, people, if you don't choose a side, then both sides will uh, attack you. Because yeah. that's how the pro the propagandists want it to be black and white. They want to take something complex and simplify it to ultimately communists versus Nazis, it, mm -hmm. you know, to a certain extent. And, and if they can do that, then the way they do that anyway is if, if you – even if you're the most moderate person in the world, but you happen to fall just slightly on one side or question one thing or another, you automatically get classified as the other. And they just repeat it over and over again. Mm -hmm. I, I had somebody I hadn't talked to, and I probably told you guys this before, I hadn't talked to in, in a long time. And he put on my my LinkedIn account uh, that I was a white nationalist. What? On LinkedIn? Yeah, I, I don't ever use it. Like, if I actually use LinkedIn to get jobs, which I don't, I don't, I hadn't logged into it in years then that would be really messed up because I'm not at all. I'm like, I'm, you know, that, that I, I think nobody wants to be around racist. I think racism is shitty. I, I, people, I think there's, uh, people have racist views, but I think that there is, they, they blow that up. I think they try mm -hmm. and make it seem like it's more prominent than it well, is. And, not, and not to say that it's not are fair. weak. They're yeah. weak. These are not people who are in power. It's it's at this point in time, I can confidently say that people believe that racist thoughts are worse than pedof than pedophilia. Oh, I saw that there was a poll I, on Twitter today. What do you think is worse, pedophilia or uh, a pedophile or a racist? And it shocked me that so many more people thought that a racist was worse than a pedophile. Like, but a racist is just a person who thinks thoughts in their heads and a pedophile is actually like doing a thing like what the fuck yeah. but yeah that's well that they just they me. just don't like people that don't take action is all i guess <laughs> yeah, yeah. <it's> jesus <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what it seems like uh. wow <laughs> yeah but um i was i was really disturbed by that because it's like you know a, a, a person might be racist in their mind but be able to get along with everybody in their life, go to work, you know, and, and I'm fine with that. If you keep your own thoughts in your head and you're able to like function in reality and you don't violate anybody's rights or prevent them from living their life, then think what you want. It doesn't hurt anybody, you know, and whereas somebody who's like racist out, like outwardly, they're gonna they're gonna do that a few times and the people around them are gonna be like what the fuck's wrong with you or they're gonna yeah. want to get away from them and they're gonna stop right. doing it or they're gonna start to change the way that that they think and, and you're right it's look at kyle rittenhouse look at his interview with with tucker carlson oh, i didn't see that yet how was it I, I haven't watched it but some of the, the I, I haven't watched all the way through but some of the clips from it were him talking about how he's pro black lives matter like He's, according to Twitter and according to the mainstream media, a white nationalist racist person. And yet even he is, you know, saying, saying that, that he's for Black it. Lives Matter. Yeah. That Which makes you think, show. like, how far over the line, like how uh, just tapped away just slightly to the right of full on uh, Black Lives Matter Marxist communist. 
anything just a tick to the right of that is a full blown white nationalist. That's a, uh, you know, that's not. I, yeah, I wonder how long people there. are going to buy that. Like, I, I just feel because it's gotten so ridiculous. Because if everything is racist and nothing is racist, if you're going to just, yeah. I just I think that people aren't buying it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the so fact that you have to evangelize too, though. And, um, and I'll use Chris Pratt as a great example. Uh, Chris <laughs> Pratt, well, he goes to this like conservative Christian church. So they already know that about him. But the reason that they hate Chris Pratt is he doesn't say that he like likes Trump or that he's a conservative or that he's pro life and things like that. But he doesn't also come out and say, I hate Trump. I love abortion. And so they attack right. him because he's not. He's not uh, outwardly progressive, so they assume that he must be some kind of a conservative. Um, so I think Pratt is a good example of how progressives uh, approach this. You can't just believe. It's not good enough to believe. You have to get out there and evangelize everywhere. Yes, and that's exactly like that whole idea of them. You can't be in the middle. It's like you have to be active on one side or the other. They had this study that came out with the nine political tribes. Uh, you guys might have saw it last week, I think, or two weeks ago. And the one that had the smallest number of Americans in it was progressives, but they were also the most active political group. So yeah. the smallest group yeah. was the most active. And I think that that is just warping the perception of reality because I think that is what yeah. the media is. Also, um, to go to back to the point about Chris Pratt real quick, he posted something on Instagram that said he loved his wife. Mm. And the headline read, oh. Chris wow. Pratt hates his ex-wife. Right. Yeah. Oh, and Chris Pratt what? said, "Oh, my my wife gave me a healthy uh, a healthy child," and they instantly said, "Oh, Chris Pratt just said that um, uh, he's he didn't he's, love his son Jack. He's dissing yeah. his son. That's correct because he has some health problems. Yeah. That's so how this, bad they hate is, his guts." This is an example of what Binkley is saying, where it's not simply enough to say, "I love my wife." You have to actively like that saying, just saying you love your wife actively means you hate your ex-wife. Like this is the way that yeah. the language is being twisted. And nobody, and, and so, most people aren't going to read it like you yeah. did. They're not going to actually go to it. They're just going to see the angle. And yeah. you know, his, Arnold Schwarzenegger is his, his father-in-law too. And he is like the most progressive. This is the stuff that he says at this point. He's, it, I can't imagine what, like Thanksgiving is going to be, or was with uh, Chris. And <laughs> why did you do that tweet? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's the the personality that these people events to the public because they know it's going to keep them in the headlines. And then there's the way that they act in private. Um, I know some people who work in the film industry and they know for a fact that these people act this way because it keeps them in the headlines. And when they're in private, it, they get along with people because that, you can't function. You can't function in the real world where you're constantly lashing out at everybody. You're going to go to Thanksgiving dinner and talk about, oh, did you know that turkey is the symbol of the white man who murdered all the Native Americans? Like you, no one's actually going to do that. You're going to tell your Instagram friends that you went home and told your stepdad that he was a white supremacist, <laughs> but you're not actually going to go do that. What a bizarre thing. Like that's one of the things that's frustrated me a lot over the last yeah. year, year and a half, two years is, uh, there's a person who's close to me who, uh, on his, um, on his, uh, Instagram, he, his part of his bio is that he, he makes jokes that offend his family. Yeah. Like because that's, that's, that's some point of pride. That's clout. <laughs> if you're a leftist, that's clout. Yeah. If you tell offensive jokes and you're anything but a progressive leftist, you're a white supremacist. And, and I wonder what the, what jokes are considered because jokes right now on the left is you dress up like a needle and you dance around and sing a, a vaccine right. propaganda song. Or, or, you right. know, yeah. You can't even do comedy anymore. The the this so Colbert gets out there and he says he says great news guy oh welcome to tonight's show great news Biden's build back better infrastructure bill has passed and then the crowd goes ah! and they just scream and that's so it's wow. so unnatural and not I mean it's stage produced they're, they're telling yeah. them on these cues to do it and it's the most unnatural nobody's screaming for infrastructure bills but they want to make people think that people are just like oh my fucking god the fucking infrastructure yeah. you're jerking off in the crowd nobody yeah. fucking does that i wish I what he yeah. would have said was um hey everybody 
Joe Biden just added over $12,000 worth of immediate tax <laughs> debt to each household in America. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. They just do whatever the stage producer tells them to do. And all he's doing is repeating CNN. It, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's terrible. I saw and again, a YouTube video on Colbert's channel three or four days ago. Uh, when I say three or four days ago, I'm talking in the past tense as in like maybe November 20th, something like that. <laughs> I, I have a wide range of just a few days ago. Um, and it was a <laughs> it was a video. And in the title, they mentioned Trump and Colbert's people had written the T in Trump and then asterisk out the rest of his name. <laughs> They wouldn't type out oh, Trump's full God. name. Yeah, he doesn't say his full name usually. He calls him something else when he says it. 45. Yeah. Yeah, or Trump. <laughs> they like to say Trump. Yeah. Which is no. xenophobic, which is uh, hilarious to me. Like they well, went with like xenophobia a... as the uh, fight against xenophobia. Right. It's the very this, uh... from Germany. <laughs> <laughs> this constantly changing set of rules where certain words become an anathema and you can't say them. And if you do say them, you are, you know, outside of the circle. And there's nothing worse than being outside of the circle because now that literally means you're, you know, unemployable. You're not allowed to go to bars and restaurants. You're, you know, they're definitely trying to section off a part of society that's the good people. And then as part of the society, that's the bad people. Do you guys think yeah. it's going to work? Or do you, do you think that because there's been pushed back? What, how, what, what do you think is going to come of this segregation they're trying to do with the vaccine? I think it's dead in the water at this point. Don't you? I, I, I'm in the South. And so I tend to think that it really won't um, take hold very well and, 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 and hang on. We're in, I'm in South Carolina. We're all, and, in the um, yeah. thank the Lord. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I don't have a feeling like, um, it, it, like it's really going to take hold around here. Um, I think in cities and things, it's easier to get away with, um, but the cities are just falling apart anyway on every level. So, but if you go up to like Boston, Massachusetts, where a lot of my family members live, that area is completely the opposite of what like you and I probably experience in. Florida and Georgia and, you know, areas like that. So there is already this sort of regional segregation. There are places that Let are kind ask, of in between, but. Do the gun laws in those places match the gun laws in Australia by any stretch? Because little, it seems somewhat, like those places with the extreme closer. gun laws happen to have worse, worse uh, COVID measures. It, yeah. It's certainly a cl it's certainly closer. That's right. Yeah, th there's probably a direct correlation between the two. I mean, in South Carolina, it, you know, here's as good as it gets in South Carolina. Uh, I'm not praising this by any means, but uh, the governor's like, oh, here's some lockdowns and some mandates, uh, but gun stores are essential. Yeah. So, like, I mean, who, who even class... likes guns? Guns are guns are bad, guys. You shouldn't <laughs> own guns. You shouldn't have guns around. It's just a, it's just a terrible idea. Uh, the FBI is going to come to all of our houses tomorrow. <laughs> Why? Cam's yeah. the one with the girl call, gun. I don't. I, I am <laughs> oh, a, wow. That is a woman's gun. That is my wife. A pearl handle. Right. That is a girl gun. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty. It's a but lady it's on hand. my desk. Uh, uh, a lady hey, gun. It's totally that's a lady like, gun. La the lady gun is on my desk for different reasons. <laughs> I don't have guns in all the rooms in different places of different calibers. I don't. Do, I don't do something like that. I, 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 there you go, right there. <laughs> now, it's see, that would fit in my bra. That's definitely a girl gun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the only reason I would ever want to wear a bra. I promise. The only reason <laughs> is to hide a gun in it. <laughs> He he will no longer wear makeup or carry a purse. You, you don't <laughs> think that there's utility in carrying cash in a bra, though? Of course. Yeah. Duh. Well, yeah. I mean, there was. Now, I mean, now you got to put like crypto in there. <laughs> <laughs> just you just have to have gold plated titties. <laughs> yeah. right, right. Which we know Brad has, so right. he doesn't have to. Worry My titties about are that. on the blockchain. So. <laughs> You know, in my in my drinking, bar hopping, party days, um, carrying a purse, you would leave a purse places. You know, if you got drunk, it was very easy to like leave your purse laying around somewhere. If you keep your stuff in your tits, it's always going with you, no matter how hammered you get. 
So, you know, it's just a benefit to have a rack to carry things. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, I agree. having a I purse agree. in a yeah. drinking area is just bad operational security and yeah. you should feel That's bad. Right. And as That's guys, right. you know, we stuff stuff in wallets. Like the purse is, we, we're not going to carry one, but it's kind of like, man, I wish we had a little bit of a bigger sack to hold our stuff in. Right. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like guys can, can absolutely carry a nice, nice sized piece on their side, but Think about the size of the gun you could carry in a purse. You carry a big one in the purse. I mean, that's a sawed-off shotgun. Right. right. <laughs> Do you guys ever watch um, Marshall Matt Dillon, Gunsmoke? You ever seen that show? Uh -oh. oh, I mean, I'm sure I've seen it a long time ago. It's on MeTV. So my, uh, uh, my, my dad's elderly, and he watches it all the time. And 24-7, <laughs> he watches it. Right I just on. watch The Rifleman. And every, every, all that goes on in the old West, according to the show, the, I've seen the rifle. He watches the rifleman also. Oh yeah. <laughs> Connor, man. Uh, apparently all they did was nothing but draws and kill each other. Like every yeah. five minutes, you just, <laughs> bah, bah, yeah, bah, bah, bah. you're just killing people. So a lot of the, so I found this out the other day. I kind of knew it, but I heard it cemented. Um, a lot of the cowboy lore the way we view it with with guns and all the shooting up, some of that stuff happened, but a lot of it came through the spaghetti westerns because it was yeah. Italians telling fantastical American stories, and then that became the American vernacular on cowboys. <laughs> so we imported their spaghetti, made it better, and then, <laughs> then, then we took their cowboy yeah, stories, which I, they I, made I just better. I don't think it was as bad as they make it out to seem in those, those westerns. No, uh, and what's funny is a lot of the the big named like cowboys and sheriffs and stuff were like horrible. Like they wanted, uh, they had gun control in the towns, and they yeah. would they would not allow. Like there are a lot of those guys who are like, oh, that's a hero, and then you're like, wait, they they wouldn't let people own guns. Wyatt Earp is a great example of that because the whole um, fight at the OK Corral happened over the fact that he was trying to make sure that these people didn't carry guns in his town. And, you know, there's sort of like this uh, American right that we think of as y you have the right to own a gun. But out in these Western territories that were not inside of the purview of the United States, these sheriffs could do pretty much whatever they wanted. And including if you walked into town with a gun, you couldn't carry your gun. And so this entire fight happened over him trying to disarm people who were, you know, as far as we would consider rightfully carrying arms. So we consider Wyatt Arbor hero, but was he? Yeah. Wow. Also, also he like left Waco. his wife for a prostitute. So what a yeah. bastard. Throwing that was a out. common theme back in those days, I think. Yeah. Yeah. She hot? So Doc Holliday wasn't. Yeah, she was super hot. <laughs> she was an actress too. She was really hot. I mean, I don't blame him. Um, Maddie Earp was a, a drug addict and um, a depressive. And he had got grown tired of her because of that and left her for Josephine. Um, so yeah, Maddie Earp is buried in a unmarked grave in a ghost town. And uh, Wyatt Earp and Josephine lived into their 90s. So yeah. Wow. It's not. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. You know a lot about that. Yeah, that stuff is cool yeah. to think about. And so it, there's going to be one day when it's a hundred years from now where we're going to be like the old West, whoever lives from now. I wonder what type of stories they will tell about us. Of course, they will have the these digital stuff. Yeah, all of our gender face swaps will represent. <laughs> 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 yeah, were they right. gender face swapping back in the old west? <laughs> <laughs> they were Wouldn't watching TV in 320p. <laughs> yeah, what a bunch of cavemen. Uh, they were jacking off manually. They were had those Superman, Superman tattoos, tattoos back then. <laughs> <laughs> they were they weren't banging monster hot chicks in the metaverse like we advanced. Like, yeah, people. they are. <laughs> Yeah. No, but um, I do want to uh, do a Wild West tour and go see like the OK Corral and all that stuff. And mainly so that I can go and lay flowers at the grave of Maddie Earp because she got a raw deal and she didn't deserve that shit. Hell so if anybody yeah. out there, Let's... go put flowers on her grave. What's your name? Her. Maddie Earp? Maddie Earp. Yeah. Try to go fund me for Maddie Earp. That's right. <laughs> I would. I, I would love to give her like a proper <laughs> gravestone and. She deserved more than she got. She, yeah, was she got wife. screwed over. You know, now that you say yeah. that, I remember that kind of side story in the yeah. the Tombstone movie. It's like nine hours long, but yeah, yeah. She she was addicted to laudanum. 
um, back in that day, that's what uh, that's what ladies did. They did laudanum, and you could get it out of the Sears catalog. And uh, yeah, what did um, it after, do? Um, so it was a lot. From what I understand about it, it was a lot like heroin. <laughs> um, the effects were very similar to heroin, and um, you could overdose on it pretty easily. But all you had to do to get it was order it from a catalog. You could order heroin nice. from a catalog back then, too, along with all the needles and the accoutrements that you would need to do it. But laudanum, um, unlike heroin, you could just drink. So you would get like a bottle and you could just shoot laudanum. Um, but yeah, plenty of... Plenty of people. Uh, we could make died. a ton of money selling drugs if we could go back in time to the 1800s. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Fentanyl. Medi we, we the medicine, the, yeah. the classic medicine show. Yeah, we'll get a little. It would be some kind of mix of like, you know, various drugs that would get you high. And that's what they were peddling. The snake oil salesman was the drug dealer. Like yeah. the Rockefeller, the, uh, the patriarch of the Rock yeah, Rockefeller family, snake oil salesman. Yeah, well. That's some oregano. Some oil. <laughs> yeah. Some of that stuff, uh, it's it's really interesting because it didn't it didn't become illegal until it became popular with certain communities. So like marijuana, for example, was perfectly legal until it became popular with like the jazz community. And then <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the, the Mexican my the nice jazz community. <laughs> some jazz Americans. What do y'all think American about Ranger? the push to legalize it now? It, 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 it seems like, I know it's obviously gotten stronger over the years, but I don't, I don't trust this effort to legalize. I think I did a, a paper and a presentation in college about how drugs, prostitution, all of it should be completely legal. So I, I think it should be, but just the way they're controlling the legalization of it, it just seems really suspicious to me. It makes me think of Aldous Huxley, Huxley's Brave New World. Uh, yeah. What's 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 the drug in that called? I don't know. Soma. If you, Soma. It makes me think of Soma. And I'm not saying that, oh, I don't want these things to be legal. I'm saying it very much seems to me that they are using this like Soma. They want people to be high and happy. Yeah, but at the same. So I don't know if you saw, but a couple of weeks ago, Thomas Massey uh, tweeted out. He goes, hey, check it out. Um, everybody kept saying that they were going to try to help people by legalizing marijuana. And here it is right in their own bill that you get jail time if you get caught with untaxed marijuana. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. It tells you all you need to know right there is that yeah. you want to regulate yeah. it to tax it. But Massey himself pointed that out a couple of weeks ago. It's right there in the bill. You go to jail if they catch you with untaxed marijuana. Yeah. Yep. It's not That's about um, helping people. <laughs> speaking no. about face, face up gender swaps. I did want to share a couple of those that I've made lately. Uh, one of them being Ooh. more uh, wow. dead hair. What yeah. do you think, Jessica? What do you I think, hit Brad? That. Who is who is that? That's that's, that's dent. That's, that's me. Dent. Is that you? Damn, dude. Yeah. Thank yeah. the shit out of that yeah, check. You yeah. number, dude. You I'm do give me that number. I'm doing the the talk <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah. God, dude, I can't look at you anymore after seeing that. That, that was a Tom. <laughs> that was a Tom Woods 2000. That was great. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, how was that? Nice. But, Oh, it's good. fantastic. That is, um, oh gosh. I mean, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it took me a minute to figure out. Like, I, I didn't realize, I was like, who's the other person? I know that's I was like, oh, it's Monica. <laughs> so Cam's, Cam sent me one with and without the mullet. And I said, Monica would want the mullet. I think. <laughs> If you're gonna respect Monica, you have to put the. Put the He's definitely on got Monica's attitude. Yeah. <laughs> like you can tell, like you can tell the intensity, like you can see it. <laughs> I feel like he'd show me a good time. Yeah, he no, probably, he looks like he looks like track. he knows his shit. Is what he looks like. He knows, like he would probably take me to the dirt, the dirt track race, and oh, we yeah. would have an awesome time. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I look like so a bitch. Is what I look like. Look, 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 yeah. look at, at Brad here and tell me what you think of Brad. Uh, just looks like she's gonna fucking yell at me or that's you know? exactly what it looks like she's, i look like you know what yeah. she's just using me to get into the club i, I, I look like a nightmare be... i look like a nightmare to date is what i look like <laughs> but very good looking right, i look oh, like yeah. I, I look i look like i i would i hold that p and then I throw it around when I need something is what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch is going to key your car. For sure. Yeah. Right. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll totally key your card, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, so that face app is interesting. So that was like a, a year and a half ago, two years ago, that was going around. Then it kind of came back again. I thought that was I thought that yeah. was interesting. It comes in waves. So they get better. Like, yeah, and in, in, in like I, I can show you two of mine. Um, but uh, I don't hope I didn't send that to, that picture to my wife on accident. That would be <laughs> weird to explain. Oh uh, god, that'd be hilarious. Um, I also She's I also gonna, like, look like in a the knife. door behind him and come grab him by the back of his. Who is this redheaded bitch? <laughs> He's right there. <laughs> it's me, Jessica. Well, she's a man, so. <laughs> so yeah, crazy stuff happened this year. So we 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 talked about that. Like, what were the for Dent? What do you think were the the highlights, the good things that we we happened upon this year? Oof. Was there any? <laughs> I feel like Besides I'm on the spot show. here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can we just go with that? I. <laughs> uh, it's been it's been it's been a rough year, I think, for everybody. And um, uh, gosh, I mean, as, no. far as, as far as something. No. Just, uh, <laughs> oh gosh, there it is. Yeah. So doesn't that look like Troy from The Office? The little. I saw the side by side you guys put, and yeah, it did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it is interesting how you can see <laughs> you can see the pieces of ourselves in those photos. Like you can, it's yeah. just yeah, it's, it's so it's so weird. <laughs> I'm I'm four eleven, and you can tell that dude would be four eleven. Oh my god, who is that? That's me. That's Cam. is it really? I had to you find can a see the beard. A beard. No, but you could see like. Well, there's there's a little bit of beard there. I had to find one with yeah. the least amount of beard. Cam Cam looks like you need to check her ID before you talk to her any further. Yeah. It's true. It's true. <laughs> I look like jailbait. And that <laughs> ID is probably fake. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah. And she's also got a tattoo of a butterfly on her back. Oh yeah. yeah more than likely. Um, I don't know about that. Yeah, she it's does. Definitely on her chest right here. What? <laughs> <laughs> what does Jizz Lane have? She had a snake on her back. That was a story uh, earlier this week. Ooh, like, look at the picture of Jizz Lane, a snake on her back. Have you heard anything about worshiper. her lately? Because it's like there was no news, and now there are drawings of the court uh, case. But is there anything worth? It's like a comic out? book with these drawings. I think you get a flip book of these comics. So, just to throw it out there, federal. I don't think they allow cameras in they federal. Don't. Yeah, you're yeah, right. So it's not yeah. like a conspiracy or anything. It's like right. they've never done that. No, so. no, I got I got uh no. confused on that early on too. Because so I was like, well, I never showed the but yeah, federal court, they don't and Stelter and them on CNN, reliable sources, most unreliable source on television, was talking yesterday about how this this is a time where they need to let the let the cameras into federal court so that we can see what these January six insurrectionists are really like. So that's they they're just pushed to, for, uh, to get the law changed now so we can really see the face of uh, evil from January 6. Jizzlane. Yeah. The the thing with the Ghislaine Maxwell thing is it's probably going to impl implicate a lot of people who would motion be the ones for, in motion for everyone to say her name differently. <laughs> I mean no one Gislani. really knows how to say it. I mean, I, yeah, I think Jessica said it properly. I think I, I said I think it's it. Jelaine. It's Ghislaine. either Ghislaine or Jelaine. It's one of the two. It's not Jizz Lane, but that's. No. Yeah. I mean, it's good. got an, whatever it is, it's got an accent. It's not just like. Right. We're saying Ghislaine. an American. Yeah. It's yeah. It's, she's not from Atlanta where it's uh, Ghislaine. You know. I'm Ghislaine like, from Atlanta. Gilly. <laughs> Gilly. Gilly. <laughs> So it's it's Jelaine. Come on in, girl. Listen, Jeffrey's gonna like you. <laughs> <laughs> she was also at the dirt track race. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you just a no. little happy ending. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I bring up the dirt track race a lot because um, it was a lot of fun. If you ever have the opportunity to go to a dirt track race, go. Because I've been. Um, yeah, I used to go with my it's brother. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah in Athens I was, we go. I was, yeah, so the one I went to was the um, near Athens. So I wonder if we went to the same one, but I was looking at it online oh. and 
one of the reviews was one, it was one star review and it said very classy people. And I, <laughs> I said, we're going to this. <laughs> yeah. You're going to see some necks up there at the dirt track race. We so. did. We saw a fight. Um, so we, we saw, uh, several car crashes and a fight i feel like for 10 bucks we really got our money's worth yeah i, I remember the last time i went i mean it was a long long time ago i, I was i was a kid at the time my, my brother's 15 years older than me and he was like i'm gonna go around and try it one more time that's how he talks he's a mechanic he's like ah, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. camo pants on <laughs> and he comes back and like his face is just like peeled out and just blood is <laughs> gushing he's like and, and, and seriously we're driving back and he's taking me home because I was like 10 at the time. And his face is just like blood, just like a waterfall coming down. Cause yeah, <laughs> okay, because cause he, he crashed and he got all messed up. And then he looks yeah. over while he's driving, and he goes, You think I need stitches? <laughs> and like, yeah. yeah. You need stitches. <laughs> yeah. My mom freaked out when she saw it too. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that yeah. sounds like a dirt track date to me. It's definitely a dirt track. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, some interesting <laughs> folks. Yes. So, anything Very interesting classy. from from Jelaine's trial, or is it all just boring nonsense? I wonder I mean, why I, they're putting attention on is what I wonder. Well, the most interesting thing I saw was some of the people that were mentioned as co co conspirators. I yeah. think in some of the filings, which was like the NYPD. I found that mildly interesting. Did they release that? Who those co Okay, yeah. Were? So there was a filing um, from a couple of months ago where it was a bunch of people were listed as co conspirators. A NYPD was one of them. Viacom was one of them. Um, Beyonce was one of them. Well, of course. Jay Z was yeah. on that list. Beyonce. <laughs> yeah. Beyonce. She is, I'm sure. It's just like, Queen Bay. Um, so the, uh, yeah. the deal with that, I, I couldn't find too much information about like how that was proceeding other than a couple of people on Twitter who were saying that a lot of these had been dismissed. So not everyone on the list is actually implicated, but we don't know who from the list was implicated and who was not. I have a feeling Queen Beyonce is not going to I receive think be okay. yeah. any fallout yeah. from the Glenn Maxwell thing. Op it's Oprah's got her covered. Yeah. So, yeah. So if they're not, t I think this is probably going to end up being just a, a cover up more than anything else. And more like, let's get it out there so we can bury it type, kind of like Hunter Biden type shit. Okay. Because if anybody was serious about this shit, then Hunter Biden would be, you know, there'd be the center of attention and there'd be some serious questions about the legitimacy of Joe and oh, national and security. Clintons. Yeah. And the Clintons as well. And the Clintons are, are definitely connected to this. So, this story did not become a story until they could make it a Trump story. And yeah. they made it a Trump story through Acosta, who wa was his guy in his administration, by trying oh. to make it seem as though Acosta, who was a lawyer in Florida, the prosecutor in Florida at the time, in like 2005 or six or something like that, that Epstein was getting prosecuted. And they, they made it seem as though Trump's guy gave him the deal. You know, like Trump's like, look, I want you to give this guy a deal because 15 years I'm going to be president. Uh, um, so give him a deal now. It's just totally, totally bogus. Like they covered it up for years and then they let it out when Trump and, and Acosta are there so they can throw it on Trump and throw it away from the Clintons and others. When I first investigated this shit, I assumed that both Clinton and Trump were pedophiles. That was like my baseline assumption. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I, Still you know, is. it's, uh, I, c after re reading through all of that, Trump comes out as actually somebody who, who was, uh, uh he's a creep. He, he can be a creep and he can, you know, he can be shitty in a lot of ways. But in this instance, he actually was the only one that the lawyer for the victim said helped him. He said that, that yeah. Trump is the only guy that did not avoid depositions. The only guy who picked up the phone and said, I help you out all I want. And he helped him. Ghislaine Maxwell said uh, she was sick and out of the country, avoided deposition, said she's never coming back to the country. Two months later, she shows up at the Clintons at uh, Chelsea Clinton's fucking wedding. And if they're not fucking focusing because the Miami Herald, this pisses me off because I like covered this like four and a half, five years ago. Uh, and then the Miami Herald chick comes out and wins a Pulitzer Surprise for it, or whatever it's called, for her reporting on, on that whole story when she didn't report the most damning document, which is the plea negotiation letter. It's a plea negotiation letter, which is what got Epstein his deal and was sponsored, supported by Bill Clinton himself, by the Trilateral Commission, by the Council on Foreign Relations. There's another big organization too, one of those big fucking globalist organizations 
uh, that were all implicated because they were the reason he got the deal. And it's all in the plea negotiation letter. And if people aren't showing that plea negotiation letter, then it's all bogus and it's all a cover up. And they're trying to help out the elites instead of actually exposing them. I think that's probably what's happening. I'm sorry. Yeah. I got a little worked up. No, that's all right. Trump banned uh, Epstein from uh, Mar-a-Lago as well <clears throat> because of his yes. treatment of um, yes. one of the girls there. Yeah. Um, Right. There's also, I mean, like when you think about Trump and um, the focus that's been placed on him, it's actually kind of amazing how clean he had, how clean he really had to be to weather all of this. They would have, yeah. they would have yeah. dug up so much if he had dirt on him. They would have dug up so much stuff. So Do he you had think to that be impossibly Epstein would still clean. be alive if they had been able to find that connection from. Um, Right. No, be, be, he has too many connections to the Clintons. But I mean, like, he's if they, dead if, because if they could push it, if they could push it on Trump, though, I feel like they would have kept him alive a little longer to get that out of him before he was dead. Mm. Yeah, I know, yeah. That's, that's a good point. I mean, they tried to make it look like Acosta was the one that got him the deal. Acosta was bullied and threatened by all of the by, uh, and and given that this that uh, what's his name, what's the creepy pedo lawyer? I just Dershowitz. Dersowich. Dersowich was the main lawyer, and it was his team that intimidated all those people that threatened Acosta. There was police officers quitting left. Or if you go back and read the files from 2005, they're on uh, the legal websites like Lex LexisNexis and others. You can buy them for it doesn't cost very much to get the whole files. And you can actually read through them, but it's hundreds, hundreds of pages of documents. You will see who, who was uh, threatening and who was dropping off. I mean, the cops like flies were dropping off that case. The detectives were dropping off like flies because they're being bullied and threatened by a billionaire's yeah. fucking, you know, hit squad, essentially. And and Dersowich was part of it. And Dersowich did come out and end up supporting Trump in many ways. So, you know, th these people are all fucking, they're all slapping high fives and jerking dicks in the locker room. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And, and that's the thing. Like, it's not um, like, do you remember the Franklin cover up? There were yeah. people dropping like flies in that case, too. And that was Republican yeah. centered. So it's not like there's just this one sided deal with the pedophilia. Yeah, it's totally. it's, it's all of the elites. No, it's it's also, um, you know, and whew, I hope we don't lose our channel for this one, but the royal family. There are oh, many yeah. connections Andrew in the royal is family. A straight up pedophile. Yeah, and uh, you know that happened there's... in 2021. Exposure on Andrew. Um, yeah, yeah. Pr Prince Prince Philip, um, in a lot of ways, was responsible for those cover-ups, and so that dude's dead now. And the um, details of his will are being hidden, and um, all kinds of stuff is weird around his death about all the documentation and things like that that are being hidden around him as well. So I don't know. I kind of have my suspicions about Prince Philip as well. You think the queen's still alive? I I think she's very ill. Because yeah. the the headline that just came out about her recently was that she's in a new phase. So she <laughs> yeah. was already really decrepit looking. Um, every but year, sexy. In a, but that super is. hot. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's um, like so, Betty White hot. hot. <laughs> every. Um, I mean, Every you year read in the, England, the book of John, right? In the, in the beginning was the Word and Betty White, and Betty and the White, Word and Betty White were with God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God bless you, Betty White. Um, every year in England, the Queen gives a speech at Christmas time, so they do have to trot her out for this Christmas speech, and I think Which they're they getting ready. Already re have, and it was a brilliant speech. And it was already we brilliant. Okay, together. but but we're gonna pretend <laughs> right. like we're not pre-recording right. it. But so what I think, um. <laughs> Who was the guy who did the New Year's um, show for years and years? Dick Clark. So mm. they had Dick Clark oh doing the God. New Year's special long past the point where he should have been doing it. Yeah. Like he had a serious lot. Like it really upset me because it was like a loss of dignity thing. And Same they with just. Joe Biden. Right. Um, so I think that they're trying to prepare people for the fact that, that when they trot the queen out for the Christmas uh, speech, it's going to be a, a Dick Clark kind of moment is what I'm preparing for. That's interesting. Well, when do they usually do that? On Christmas Day. Oh, okay. So, yeah. It's missed, a, every it. every year for the last <laughs> hundred years or whatever <laughs> it's been. It. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's interesting what, what yeah. they do on that. That is interesting. Because, I mean, that's going to be like a major thing. When that, like, what happened? Who's so, who, we're going to have the king take over and... This whole riff they have with so Prince Harry is over here now with, with yeah, 
he's Meghan Markle, his, a freaking yeah. op that is. And, and yeah, he, he, yeah, as soon as he came over here, I said that I was like, this reminds like before World War One. They sent these these Brits over here to go infiltrate everywhere and, and be because the Americans they would make fun of us in their letters they would write to each other. So in this book called Getting Us Into War, they would they would mock us because they would say, you just send over a duke or a prince, and the Americans will flock to them. And they'll do whatever because they just want to have them at their parties and they want them to be around them. And, and it just seemed like the same thing when he got over here. And so now he's a, he's part of this Aspen Commission on um, the information disorder that we have in America that we're suffering from. And he's been investigating for a year. He, he's a commissioner who apparently for a year has been in America investigating the information disorder and prescribing problems for our government that the Rockefeller Foundation is now already funding $10 million to fix. So we have a, a prince telling us what's wrong with our information and directing policy, but it just doesn't make any sense. It's I mean, it does make sense, but it's just like people don't question it. Yeah. There's um, also the fact that Prince Harry is not Charles's son. There's <laughs> there's yeah. no one who thinks yeah. that that kid is legitimately um, a Windsor. It's He's just not. Like, for a second there that you didn't think Charles was going to be king. Like, it, no, did it, I read your face right? Or what, what, what was that? What was he. That he he is the heir. He's the How apparent long has heir. How he wanted his mother to die is my question. Because it seems like he's probably wanted her to go for a while. But this is a figurehead position. These people don't, yeah. like the queen or the king or whatever doesn't actually have any power. So, But they but they still they want do. that prestige. They they do it, it, in a way, but they like have to go through so many levels of approval to do anything that it wouldn't. I mean, it wouldn't equate to like what we would think of as royal powers. Well, it's like our like, royal powers here are Jay Z and Beyonce and people like that. Yeah. It's much it's much <laughs> different in America, but that's like yeah. the place to be in England. I'm sure he's wanted that prestige for a long time. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. A lot of people think that when the hammer falls when Queen Elizabeth finally dies, uh, that he won't be the heir, but there's no official movement been made on that. Um, the only reason I follow these people is to watch their elegant weddings. I fully yeah. admit that. Yeah. That I'm is the boy. only I thing about I care about. All. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's a big great Fancy reset cake. guy these days yeah. he's making a lot of speeches yeah. about the great reset yeah you know, that's pro you know that's that's an interesting point because the fact that this is happening with the queen in the same year as the great reset and all this other crazy shit is happening this is i mean this is truly a great reset of, of everything of e economics politics and social and, and the queen who even if it's a figurehead I, I think they probably have a more power than just figurehead power but it's probably a push and pull there the fact that the, it, our entire lifetimes, all we've known is that old decrepit queen. I mean, yeah. that's all we've ever known. That's all most people in society have known. And to have another figurehead, even symbolically, that is going to be yes. impactful on, on the planet. When Queen Victoria died, the world broke out across the planet in revolutions and strife and wars and all kinds wow. of things like How that. How are the so, feminists going to yeah. respond to there that's... being a king instead of a queen? I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know, but that's interesting. Wow. A literal when, patriarchy. Yeah. When did that happen, Jessica? That she died. Um, I want to say she died in like 1901 <laughs> or something like that. Let me let me look this up real quick. So that could be it like a Don triggering Lemons point. The, the queen dying could be like a triggering point uh, of this great. Like we've already seen this great reset come to be, and something happens with her. I mean, that could just push everything over the top. So when um. Queen Victoria had been queen a little bit longer than Elizabeth will be queen. I mean, unless she lives past a hundred. Um, and so England does have this history of these long standing female matriarchs that, and after their deaths are usually terms, times of turmoil and not just in England, but like around the globe. So yeah, Queen Victoria's death kind of marked the end of the old world and the beginning of the, the the new world in a lot of ways. And so I do think that there is going to be some difference in our worldview when Queen Elizabeth dies because she's been the Queen of England for, you know, since the 50s. I mean, yeah, and that tells me they're going to make the announcement at a strategic time of her death, regardless of when it happens, that they're going to make it strategically. Yeah. To, to, so did you guys know that 2021 is actually 
It's the year of peace and trust. It's the international year of peace and trust. <laughs> Feels that, like it, doesn't it? It makes as much sense as anything else that's happened in 2021. You know that cartoon dog that laughs like I just laughed? I just let that laugh out, and that doesn't happen. Smedley? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a, yeah. 1952. So what? Queen Elizabeth has, uh, so I, I was wrong. Queen Elizabeth's been queen for 69 years and Victoria nice. was nice. 63. Nice. Uh, <laughs> queen Victoria was for 63 years. And so Elizabeth's gone on a little bit longer than she has, but um, that's a mo longer than any of us have been alive. Yeah. This woman. Yeah. Yeah. It's been part I mean, of like the world. I'm, I'm very curious about how people will respond because that's going to be, that's going to be something new for, not everyone on the planet, but everyone who was lucid when there was a king of England. Yeah. They, 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 I, they're not going to be the ones who were, I mean, they'll talk about it, but they'll, they'll say it in all caps and no one will listen. The and rest people of us hate are Charles. Be like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. People hate Charles because he cheated on Diana and Diana totally came out with her. her sexy uh, revenge dress and then dated a Muslim and then Queen Elizabeth killed her. So, you know, it's everybody hates knowledge. him. Fast yeah. forward years later, kicked her son out of the family. That's what happens. That's what you get. That's what you get. Yeah, you know, I think we're on to something. <laughs> I think that that's going to be some sort of triggering point or something. That's interesting. I, I haven't thought about that. That's. I just haven't given much thought to the queen. I know that they're, I mean, they have a lot of power there, but. I didn't know that riots were sparked afterwards. So I, I'm, and they've been talking a lot. I've been seeding these stories. They have these shows on Netflix about the queen and her rise to power. I mean, it's all just such a coordinated uh, uh, plan, like a psyop. Wow. So like the Victorian, out. the Victorian era ended. And then like very shortly after that, you had the 1905 Russian revolution. You had um, war. Uh, World War One happened very shortly after all of that. Like just in the next decade, decade and a half preceding that. Um, the preceding? Is preceding coming after? I don't know. But either way, after no. that, that's when all this like world changing stuff started to go down, including the rise of Bolshevism and all that kind of stuff. Which has been great for everybody. Bolshevism. It's been awesome. Very good. Yeah. Fantastic. Very good. Yeah. Especially the Mensheviks. The Mensheviks loved Bolshevism. Oh, yeah. I mean, why wouldn't they? <laughs> All right. So what do you guys think about China? We're talking about 2021. China has emerged. You have to say it right. You have to say it China. right. China. 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 You get China. 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 The China. China <laughs> has shared their weapons. Trick. I've shared this trick more than once. When you say China like Trump, he's not saying China. He's using the second half of the word for feminine gene. Right. No, he's saying it silently in China. his head. Look, he what goes, do you think about China? He goes, he goes, the China. Right, exactly. He says the the silently and then says China. <laughs> what do you guys think about the China? China is poised in the next, you know, decade or so to be the predominant economic power in the world. Well, and the become? U.S. is, yeah, I, I mean, they've, they've might have maybe two years in a row now surpassed us. As far but as you, their... but do you think that that matters as much as the information wars? Because I feel like even if they're economically stronger, but there's it's other gonna factors. Be the information yeah. that's going to be the most prevalent. So by dominant world power, economically is one thing, which yes, they have surpassed, and I think it's the second year in a row that they've done that. But um, in in terms of like how much of the globe they control, um, how many more satellites they have than we do, all that kind of stuff, like factors into their. Uh, power structure and so yeah. it's not and they're not the type of people that are going to try to have military victory across the globe that's more the u.s is doing and they've watched us fall ass backwards trying to do that over the last 20 years they're not going to make those same mistakes one they're of the big mistakes it. that we found out was nuclear power if we had oh. jumped on nuclear power when yeah. when we should have we would be much, much better off in the, the energy game mm -hmm. than China is mm -hmm. because we started that shit. So, you know. Well, that develops these weapons has also. The game, though. 
No, Info War is where it all is. Is I mean, everything is an information war. That's another part of the whole metaverse. If you get everybody connected to the metaverse and you can propagandize them with information, that's why they want to make sure the rural areas are connected. That's why they want to lay fiber out there. Lenin mm -hmm. taught people to read in the rural areas because that's how he could propagandize them with the print. They have to get internet to the rural areas so they can propagandize with the metaverse or th with the internet. A and that is these immersive experiences. They want to completely subvert the way of thinking and this battle between the United States and China, while I think there are competing factions and everything, I just think the people, you know, and I, I use this almost symbolically when I say the great reset, the people, the great reset, that's like a, that's like a, a symbol of, of they, I guess, mm -hmm. Klaus Schwab and them. Yeah. Um, I, I think they don't give a shit where, where the countries are. I think they're using the countries to, to, uh, it's just pieces on the chessboard. Yeah. But you have to also have to consider how China has been building the infrastructure in Africa for the last 10 or 20 or yeah. 10 or 15 years now. Yeah. Uh, rare earth elements and things like that. They're um, grabbing a huge piece of the pie when it comes to that kind of thing. And the fiber, Not what you talked about that. The, the backing of certain sects in Afghanistan right before America pulled out. Oh, that's interesting. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that China has been doing. And it's it, I, I don't know if it will be as... It depends. I think information is probably going to be the make or break for China. Mm -hmm. If they can break into that sphere, we're done. The America is done for. But I mean, like that's a that's a hard that's a hard road to plow because I mean we've got the preeminent setup when it comes to media. Yeah. Surprise! There's Monica Perez. Monica oh, Perez. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Literally just popping in to we, we were talking about you we were showing face swap pictures earlier i'm very glad i did not witness that. <laughs> <laughs> i was I just make having it fun again. watching the show and cam invited me to pop on uh, so had makeup on you know that that's the only reason i don't read <laughs> videos all the time but i just what are we celebrating what is what is this is new year's the, it's, 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 it's because it is December 29th right now and not yeah. November 22nd. I just haven't been able to keep, I mean, I can't remember anything since Thanksgiving. Like that's, <laughs> Crazy, right? Cooking the yeah, turkey. All of the drugs that we've done since then <laughs> wiped our memories. I'm still waiting it for helps. that horror movie special. A <laughs> hundred oh. horror movies in a row. Did I tell hey, you how I'm many I made, how many I, I watched before it was over? How many? 113. You know, that's wrong and silly. Yeah. And I'm never doing it again. That's That was the thing. I what was the to... scariest one? Oh, uh, of the Hereditary. newest. So I've seen Hereditary before. <laughs> I would say the most disturbing ones that I watched this year um, was a French film called The Martyrs. And then a, um, what was the other one? The, it's a movie by David Cronenberg's son. I think his name's Brandon, called Possessor, which was just absolutely disturbing to watch i don't work that caused it. somebody Possessed. to leave the challenge yeah really but i wanted yeah, yeah. <laughs> i wanted to to i i i knew about midway through that i didn't want to do the challenge again because <laughs> i wanted to beat it and be done with it and then i was like okay but i want to get it so high that people have to really work to beat me and so i got right. to 113 so that i don't think anyone's going to do that for a while because no one got to 100 before me and nick Pacone. So, we'll see what did, happens after. Did anyone this. watch Possum? Yes, Possum is a yep. disturbing little movie. Yeah, well, I, I, I like Matt Holness a lot. Um, he's the guy that did um, Garth Marenghi. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen that. It's Adult Swim, but it's on uh, uh, it's on YouTube these days. But uh, yeah, that guy's really talented. And um, I have not actually seen it yet, but it's one of the few horror movies that I've got my eye on. I'm not a I'm not a horror fan. But that one looked very interesting to me. I like horror. I just I, I can't. None of it really is is scary to me anymore as it was yeah. when I when I was joking. Have you seen? Did you watch Lamb? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you seen the trailer for Lamb? No, mm -hmm. I don't know what this is. Wow. Uh, Lamb. It came out. I think about a month ago or so. Maybe a little bit longer than Sounds that. Sounds familiar. And it's about this this woman who loses her baby, and yeah. she grows attached to a lamb. And so she starts raising this lamb as a child and 
at first the husband thinks it's okay, but then it gets kind of weird because the lamb's walking on two feet and then the lamb's wearing a little oh. school jacket and holding the mom's hand. Then all of a sudden all the other lambs are pissed off. <laughs> If this lamb's getting special treatment and, and then it just goes off the rails. So if you want to see a weird, maybe spooky movie, I'll be honest then with you. It goes I don't off the rails. Yeah, then I'm, it goes off the rails. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. I don't think I'm gonna watch any more movies that Brad recommends because the last one I watched <laughs> is called The Final Member. And I saw more penis in that movie than yeah. I've I told ever you seen what in my it was. Life. It but warned you in the title. There, but I yeah. didn't think there would be that much actual shown penis especially literally not about a tattoo. museum full of penises <laughs> wow <laughs> but hey Je uh monica i did want to show i don't know if you saw this i'm here to ask wonder one this question. wonderful shirt that i'm wearing though oh my gosh that it's, is so it's, awesome it's beautiful and yeah. i i need to ask you this specifically what you used through the per the people because we're using the same printer now i need to know what you did because i love the way this turned out you and are also, using the guy that i use to make no, I I, so. I have the stuff made ahead of time. The t-shirts, I love the mug. Yeah, yeah, I the mug's great. I must have a mug. Yeah, and it pretty. I what was your question? You those things. What so was your my question, question, Monica? So this is it. Here's the question, and I want to hear the answer, and then I'm gonna stop video bombing you. Uh, the question is: So Binkley and I, a long time ago, like a month ago, a couple of days before Thanksgiving did a show with someone that has since been released where it's Micah Dank and he was talking about astro it's as astrolo theology Audio something like that hmm. yeah that's it astrology. what is that audio is that related sorry um <laughs> I, I just don't know what that was so maybe it's me so uh he was talking about astrology in the bible and hmm. I mean, the the words in the Bible definitely seem to have connections with some words that surround the different signs of the Zodiac. It wasn't as like totally impossible for me to follow as like numerology stuff was, but yeah. it it negates like the any kind of literal or even closely meaningful, it seems to me, meaning of the Bible and, you know, freaked me out a little bit. So I just wonder if you guys are familiar with this stuff at all. If you go running and screaming, is it okay to kind of just like go through that process and listen to it? Like, what's your reaction? I'm, I've not heard of astrolo, astrolo theology. Astro something... I think it's astro theology. Oh yeah. Have... I've heard about it. My son astro was theology. Book... Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. My son was reading a book called the salts of salvation and it talks about the Bible and the Zodiac and the 12 salts that are essential to human beings and that the Bible is something kind of symbolic of the body and it's full of this ancient wisdom, which is very powerful. I mean, so it's, I don't know. It's just like, yeah. then the guy, actually Micah, who I really enjoy talking to, threw up a slide like, ha ha, you're Catholic. That's a sin. I'm like, well, I, I kind of knew it was a sin to buy into it, but... I'm just recognizing the connection between the words of the Bible and the words of astrology without trying so, to, you know, solicit a magical response. So mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know what astro theology is, but I will say that I think that when it comes to the star at night that led to Jesus, it, it, I'm led to think that the Magi were Zoroastrian. And so they were reading the stars and doing divination and God had used that specific subset of understanding and that subset of, um, I would say divine knowledge, but kind of tan like tangentially connected, like human knowledge of the divine that's imperfect to lead these people to the truth. But that's the nice. only thing I can, I can bounce off. Of and that. given that we are between, we are actually talking here during the time that those three kings were making their journey yeah so little christmas is yet to yeah. come yeah i'm just i i i don't I, I haven't studied it but knowing what i've learned in the past i do think that one uh i've said before and i'll say again all truth is god's truth and he's able to use any human means of trying to find truth to lead men to truth and so when it comes to astrology and Zoroastrianism and their understanding of the stars and what that told them and the divination thereof, he could have very well used that to lead a 
differently right. religious people okay. to Christ. So it's a subset. It's a subset of God's vast creation and communication. It doesn't right. negate the so the so the interpretation of the Bible, which is the God's truth, is larger than this, not the other yes. way around. And right. I would say that there's a lot to Thank talk you. about when it comes to the understanding of like how people in that time would have viewed the stars and divine beings because the, yeah. the stars and divine beings are tied together in throughout the world. And so I think that there's an, a human understanding that was incomplete that was made complete through Jesus and the Bible. Yeah. But that's I, all I can, that's all I can speak into from not that's having great. studied that it was, directly. Yeah, I agree. I think that what Cam says, even though he didn't listen to it, I think he's, I think that he's spot on. And I, I would say that having the interview is not published yet, but, we, I, in my opinion, I've been thinking about it ever since we did it yeah, a couple said. hours ago. And I, I don't <laughs> think it's it, yeah, <laughs> a month ago. Man. Hello. No, I don't think it, I think they can coexist. Uh, this idea that it's got to be one or the other, I, I just, I don't think it's that simplistic. I, I think that both can be true. There's multiple things can be true that seem contradicting at one time. And I, I think that in this case, some of the, a lot of the things that we talked about, they were very interesting, but in my mind, they did not negate out the other interpretations of people. He wanted it uh, to. Uh, of the Bible. I, I, yeah. Maybe. maybe I, that seemed I mean, like maybe he was saying that. He was yeah, saying that. I, I didn't. To me, it, for what he said while I was listening, I was like, I, I feel that can be true. And I also feel that the other interpretation can be true at the same time. And it's similar with the science and religion. Can, Evolution. Can, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm with you well, there. You can definitely reconcile those. Not to you mention, don't have to, but you could. There are whole lines. So like, let's say Buddhism. I don't agree with a lot of the tenets of Buddhism, but there is wisdom in certain aspects of Buddhism. And that mm -hmm. truth that, that came through Gautama or whatever his name was, is true regardless of who he was. So we can glean truth from the entire world through the entire revelation because a lot of these things, especially when it comes to the earth, yeah, the cosmos, all of that is uh, like it, Romans one talks about how creation reveals God. And so these but, are people who are imperfect trying to understand God through his creation. And there is absolutely some understanding of God within that. And we're very logical. This is, we're in a group of people that are very logical. Every person here is very logical and they ask questions. They think things through. And, and, from what, what I've known of everybody here, we try to base things on the information that we have. But it, it it's when it comes to the universe, there's no no freaking way we, we can like we can't wrap our heads around that. So it, it's like trying to make sense out of the logic. I think it's good to pursue that knowledge to continue to pursue that knowledge. But I think that once we feel we've come to a certain conclusion about how everything has, has operated, I, I, I just don't think we can comprehend it. I, I, I mean, yeah. we're globe spinning a thousand miles an hour, hurling through space right now. I, I think that the more we continue to ask questions, the more we find that a lot of these things can coexist as opposed to being exclusive. I think something can be metaphorical and literal at the same time. I don't think they have to and Absolutely. Think, uh, a good analogy might be uh, like a jigsaw puzzle, and we have some pieces. We don't have all pieces, and we definitely don't have the yeah. picture on the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah my, definitely. My analogy, analogy. <laughs> is that when you're trying to understand the universe and God and all of that, you are drinking out of a waterfall. And so you take what you're able to ingest, and anything else is mystery. And so that's where we exist as human beings is we're drinking. It's not even a hose. It's a waterfall. <laughs> There's this vast existence, this, these vast understandings that we can't even scratch the surface of. And yeah. we take what we can get and w where the truth is, we chase after it. And would not think, to figure it all out be God? Would you not be God? if you Yes. Figured it all I, out? I, I, I right. think at that point, I think the only person who could do that would be God. Absolutely. I feel as long as you're not enticed to bow down or worship these aspects of astrology or um, knowledge of the universe or anything like that, as long as you recognize that like God is the the head of whatever it is you're trying to discover, you're probably going to stay in some pretty safe territory. And the mind is a garden. Allow yourself to wander. Just don't be tempted to bow down before things that are not God. 
I'm just yeah. trying to prepare for all the people who are going to email me telling me <laughs> how I did not represent. And I try like, I hate getting so I'm the last person. Like I still have yet to read the Bible. That's why I'm calling this season. My, not my white Christmas, but my white pill Christmas. And I am going to Monica, you that. should join our Bible study. We are reading through the books of the new Testament and we have a once a week meeting where we talk about it. I'm starting Bible in a year. Yeah, I want to start for the, the same reason. I've never I want to read. Start I'm 50 years beginning. old, and I've, yeah. I've, I'm, I'm 50 years old, and I've never read the Bible. And I just downloaded an app uh, yesterday, actually, to start doing Bible in a year. What's the app? Nice. You, oh, that's a great you, idea. But I want to start yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. If any of you want to join yeah, our particular Bible study, which is in the Gospels, because we're talking about Jesus first, yeah. and then we're going to go in different oh, directions. Oh, interesting. So we, we read through John first, and then we're going to go Luke-Acts. So that's because Luke and Acts are the same, are ex essentially one book split apart. I might so get we're emails go through just that. hanging around with Protestants. So on a I was actually going to say, <laughs> Monica. Wrong uh, uh, Although, actually, Jessica, I think, does not count. I think I'm allowed to hang out with you. Yeah. I'm an, yeah, I'm an Orthodox though, so they might dislike yeah, me. Yeah, no, more. no, no, no. You you dislike <laughs> us more than we dislike you. That's for Monica. Sure. Um, yes, 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 and yes. no one loves the Protestants. No, we are <laughs> you're just complainers. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? You destroyed everything. We got nothing well, in return. You what's need funny the about bro? What's but funny about good. this stream right this second is we've got two Catholics, an Orthodox, a Protestant, and Brad. A Methodist. <laughs> Methodist. Sorry. There you go. Hey, we're 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 <laughs> somewhat closer than the rest of them. So I, I don't want to hijack his show. So I want to hear what Dan has to say. And then we go. Oh, oh, Monica, I was going to tell you that uh, Father Mike Schmitz actually started Bible in a Year, January first of this year. And so what they do is they they actually read you, um, you know, a certain segment, and then he discusses it, and it looks like it's done in maybe 15, 20 minute increments. It's fifteen minutes. It's actually. Oh, a awesome. rule that you're supposed to do 15 minutes of spiritual reading every day. Is it audio? Are you telling me it's, it's audio? It, it's audio and it's on YouTube. Father oh. Mike Schmitz. Mike oh. Schmitz. I, will. Schmitz. I might be able to, because you know I have this problem. My husband goes to bed really early and I like to crawl into bed, like read a book or whatever, but it's just a problem. That's why if you ever tweeted me a video or anything, like I absolutely cannot open it. But I can put on real, real low a little bud and then we're off to the races. So I'm going to take that. That is my white pilled Christmas. Thank you. I'm hey. excited about it. I'm, yes. I, lo I love to hear it. I will say my final thing is in January, we're going to be talking to our friend Ryan. Uh, there is a project that I am pushing to work on now because I don't know if you know this about the Bible, but most uh, versions of the Bible are copyrighted. And so they can't actually be shared without com permission or payment to specific companies who own the copyright. That's nonsense. And there are a couple of versions of the Bible outside of the old ones, like, you know, the Vulgate or the Septuagint, things like that, that are more mo modernized. And so we're going to be, I'm, I've been talking to Ryan about this. Um, and one of the things I we're working to do is actually, I've had like four or five people aside from Ryan, tell me that they would love to read the Bible or listen to the Bible, but hear me read it. And that's a project that I think I'm thinking about working on. So in the new year, good idea. I would sponsor that project. That's a good idea. You got a good voice for that. Perfect. You got the mic for it too. Yeah, I do. Yeah, Thank yeah. You, ben. And yeah. if you do this, like you did the Waco red pills, if you put sound oh effects gosh. in your Bible mm -hmm. reading, so, the way you did like with Waco, that would really yeah. bring the stories I'd to life. I'd actually vote for mm -hmm. you to do more of that, like Oklahoma City. That's a great Bible. idea. It's, it's just, it's so much, it's, it's, it's painful. But that's all I'm saying is if you're interested in that, we're going to be talking about it in January and I may be able to read the Bible to you. If you're I, I think that's that. amazing because a lot of people, uh, I, me personally <laughs> too, I, I want to read and, and know more about the Bible and I do from time to time, but it's tough. You know, the Bible's, uh, it's, I, and I read a lot. But like, you know, there's all kind of reasons people don't get through the Bible, whether it's psychological, whether it's like, ah, I'm going to read it, but not now because I, I don't want to reflect. And, and so having a reason where it's uh, um, can be engaging. And I, I think that you could do really well at that. Well, it's and I will say that um, I'm glad she mentioned the Bible study because that's what we're doing. Because we just finished John and it's we're, we're reading it ourselves at the moment. I haven't recorded anything. And then every week we're talking about it. So it's it's literally like 
I, I, I'm not saying I'm the most uh, thoughtful and understanding person when it comes to the Bible. I have a degree, but that means little to nothing. I've just done my own study, and I have some knowledge that I can share. But every week we've had like between six and seven people show up, and everyone's asking questions. Everyone's talking about things. Different people have different points of knowledge that they've studied. And it's been a really cool experience because it's not reading it alone. It's not reading it without having some discussion, without having some, what does this mean? Why is this there? And someone has something to say, and then you have something to study. So that's really, I I think that's really cool. I I think what makes the Bible difficult for a lot of people is there is a lot of historical context. So like the epistles of Paul were written to, you know, certain communities. Those communities were not America. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> you know, so and this it can is, be very this difficult. This is one of my primary points that I make constantly is we need to read this and we need to understand who wrote it, who they were, who they wrote it to, and the historical context to which they wrote. So mm-hmm. if you're looking at the Gospels, you're looking at the Second Temple period of, Christ, of Ju- Judaism and how they would understand these words in the Bible. And that's how Jesus the disciples would have spoken to these people is within this understanding at that point in history. I would like, but I would like, I would like y'all to watch once we post it to watch the description of uh, the astrology relation to the Bible in the show that, that we post. Yeah. Cause I, I would love to hear what y'all's thoughts are. And I would, I think mm-hmm. you guys would have a lot of interesting insights on it. But Jessica, you have, you're very open about your, your journey, like religiously <laughs> on, on Twitter mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah, I, I, that um, intru- I think that that is intriguing when I see stuff like that. It's it's because of a Catholic action. So when Monica said, uh, you hate us more than we hate you, I know she's not referring to me specifically. Um, I'm an Orthodox because of a Catholic. Um, I was searching for churches, and I ended up going to a very non-denominational sort of uh, Protestant, I guess, non-denomination megachurch. And it was a 30-minute rock concert followed by yeah. 30 minutes of feel good yeah. and then you go home and um, one day they handed us these little juice cups with a pull top and it had a little cracker inside of it and I was furious they just handed these out to everybody and my husband who I had told him be- previously if you're not confirmed in the church you don't take Eucharist this was something I just like happened to know for some reason but when they handed these out they handed him one and he looked at me and he said can I have this I said, yeah, you can, because that's not the Eucharist. Because it's not and real. And we did, because it's not real. Because we, we didn't go back after that. I was furious. And so um, I went to Christmas mass with a Catholic friend of mine. And I was sitting there thinking, okay, this is more what it's supposed to be, for, for me at least. I'm not saying it has yeah. to be that way for everybody. But I really appreciated what was going on in the mass. And afterward, my Catholic friend who I had gone to mass with, I was kind of complaining to her about what had happened at that mega church. And she said, um, to her great credit, she didn't say, oh, well, you should come be a Catholic. She said, weren't you baptized Orthodox? She would remembered that about me. I didn't even remember that about myself in the moment, but she remembered that about me. I said, oh, yeah, that's true. She said, well, you should go to an Orthodox church and find out if that's still where you belong. Um, and so I did start to go to an Orthodox church. And when like my first liturgy, my first service there, I was like, this is what I have been missing. This is home. This is where I belong. So um, to her credit, my friend could have recruited me (laughs) to Rome, but did not. (laughs) She actually gave me some really good guidance. So um, I have nothing but love for Catholics. As far as I'm concerned, I would like our two churches to reunite. Um, I don't consider them um, separate churches. We're in schism, but um, they're Catholic, the word Catholic means universal. Yep. And we both say the creed. We both say we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Yep. And so to me, that means that we are siblings. We're fighting <laughs> right now like siblings do. But that's got nothing to do with me and a, another Catholic. That has to do with politics and ecumenical councils and every other thing. The, the filio que is above my pay grade. <laughs> I, it's not really something I'm like supremely concerned about. Um, to me, if you're a Christ believer, you're my brother. Yeah. And so whether you're a Baptist, Calvinist, Catholic, whatever, we're all part of the same team here. Yeah. And, 
And I'm it's just a message I think that more people should share. Like I think that they, they divide people up so much. And the reality is when it comes down to it, people are after the same thing. They want to be happy. They want to be nice yeah. for the most part. And yeah. they're just convinced that the other people are against them by, by propaganda. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's like, for me, I, I was raised, I, I, I'm, I can't even say Methodist. I was raised in non-denominational churches, particularly of the charismatic stripe. And so, like, I have nothing against Catholics. I do have some points of disagreement in theology, some that I I would say they're I, I don't think they're 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 tertiary. They're not primary. They're not secondary. Yeah. They're tertiary. Uh, there's some things that make me uncomfortable, but I love Dent. I love Monica. I love Jessica, and I am just trying to search for the truth. Yeah. And and that is the thing. Anyone in any church who's searching for the truth and has a base of um, has some base and isn't basing it on themselves. Yeah, yeah. That's that's someone that I can converse with very freely and openly and happily. If someone's trying to tell me what they think is true, I'm like, <laughs> we're gonna have a hard time, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but man, I mean, even with the um, astrology stuff, I you know, I know, I know a girl who goes to a Native American church and they take peyote as part of their worship. And they do sweat lodges as part of their worship. And some of that stuff is very connected to um, the previous religion. Um, mm -hmm. But but they're Christ believers. They 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 believe in the resurrection. And so to me, I'm like, cool, peyote Christians. I'm I'm into it. I'm not going to eat peyote during liturgy. But mm -hmm. if you're a Christ believer, you're my brother. Yeah. yeah. That's a wonderful after Christmas before New Year's message, I think. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but really though either of you if you're interested in deeper conversations with us and the and anyone who's listening if you want to join our bible study we're just reading the bible and talking about it and regardless i've, I've been in catholic churches i've been in methodist churches i've been in protestant other protestant churches i don't i've not been in a i've, I've been in a greek church but not through a greek homily mm -hmm. but like I've, I've been in all of these churches and kind of universally what i've found is homilies are good preaching is good but spiritual reading spiritual conversation and connecting with other people is by far the best way to learn because you get that yeah. wrestle you get that i mean if we don't agree we try to figure out why we and, and if you're an honest searcher of truth you're willing to throw aside your presuppositions and find the truth in it and that we is way a, better than i we talked to a calvinist listening. we talked to a calvinist the other day and he brought up St. John Chrysostom. What's the Calvinist? Um, Calvinists are like yeah. Presbyterians um, and some Baptists. It's They're the ones who are very deep into the sovereignty of God. And so they believe in election rather than um, free will when it comes to connecting go. with God. Um, but he brought up St. John Chrysostom. John Chrysostom wrote the Orthodox liturgy. So, like, we all have our roots eventually at some point that just go back to Christ. Yeah. So, like, that's the primary belief is in Christ. And Christ beyond that, God. yeah. And, and he said, he himself said that there were going to be many different types of fish, you know. And I, he's going to gather them all into his net. So, yeah. It's not for us to judge. It's not for us to judge at all. Yeah. Though we can argue, and and if we need to slap a heretic, we need to slap a heretic. But. It, it, it's an interesting subject because people have such strong feelings about it because the yeah. environment and culture they were brought up in, where some people will just completely reject certain things all out. For, for example, I know people who will not go to AA who need to go to AA because yeah. they don't like the religious aspect of it. And they don't have any understanding of what AA is or, or what it's actually the way it works, but yeah. they just have rejected it because of what they perceive the religious aspect of it to be. And they were conditioned some way or another to just reject that whole religious idea of anything. A higher power. It, right. A higher power. Exactly. And, and when there's people that, that do end up going to something like that and realize that it's not what they've been conditioned to think some sort of religion. So they're, they're imagining some sort of religious indoctrination, yeah. which is not the case. Yeah, and and yes, it's not, it, it's very, it's a very helpful thing from, uh, um, 
what I understand of it and the people that I know who've been been through it. And it's not at all some religious indoctrination. But the idea that it is religious indoctrination prevents people who could benefit immensely from it from ever even stepping foot into it. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, well, and, it's and, this idea of um, um, realizing that you're powerless and then placing a higher power above that. It kind of solidifies that idea. And so I, I remember hearing a guy once say, uh, I assume he was a, a sponsor or something years ago, uh, saying that, um, oh, it could be anything. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't have to be God. It doesn't have to be you know this or that. He's it almost saying fun. you could almost be like an inanimate object if you wanted to say that. And yeah. I think, of course, I think all he's trying to do is to address exactly what you're saying, which is don't let that part scare you away. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But you, but if you're going to say that, well, I'm helpless, uh, uh, helpless and powerless to this thing, it would make sense to place something above it. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and so I think when you're Bill W. Right. Uh, the only idea that you would have really had at that time would have been God, a, a creator, you know, just mm -hmm. along yeah. those lines. And all I can say about this conversation and how we talk about it is I do want unity. And for me personally, I can say this, especially for you three. Um, and I believe it, even though I may not feel it for the rest of the world, is I love you guys. I want to see you guys do well. I want to see you guys grow. I want you to see you awesome. guys grow in wisdom. I want to see people be happier, but not just for artificial, silly, consumerist American reasons. I want to see joy. And so that's why <laughs> I'm inviting people along the way is because happiness and joy are two separate ideas. Happiness is very circumstantial where joy is something you can lean on. And so that's what I want to see. And that's why I invite, hey, let's read this together. Let's see if we can figure this out. Anyone who hears this is more than um, more than invited. I, I I want you to be a part of this with us because I want people to I want people to live life and life abundant. I don't. And that's I'm why. Well, I think what you you about. guys presenting this stuff to you guys you offering up uh, a Bible to not to get religious or go down because I, I know some people don't like to do that. But 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 uh, um, you guys offering up the opportunity to do Bible readings and, and uh, I think that that is cool. I think it's cool as shit because it it comes from a place that is not the stereotypical image of it that people would think, and it makes people go, "Oh wow, this can be cool. It can be fun," and it, it allows them to enter into something that could be very beneficial and spiritual for them from a, a place where they're open to it. So I think it's very yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah they're like natural. I've heard I've heard yeah. Cam say shit. I know that I can I can go along with that. <laughs> right, yeah. Totally, yeah. totally. Because it's not everybody's not the stereotypical image of a of a you know Christian or what whatever you have in your mind when, when you know you see it. Cause we're all we're all crazy, you know. We're, we're crazy in a good way. <laughs> we're mad ones. And, uh, you know, I, I think that people have um, had bad experiences with religious people. And one of the greatest arguments against Christianity, unfortunately, is Christians. Now you sound and like so Gandhi. With, <laughs> well, one of the best things we can do as Christians is to not be those people. Right. You and know, I think one and so, point of wisdom that came from God through Gandhi is to be the change you want to see in the world. Mm -hmm. I think that that is truth. Sure. And Gandhi right now, I think that he is – can be an inspiration for really a lot of things right now because – What a weird dude though. It feels – yeah, seriously. His niece though. What, what happened all? with him and his niece? Okay, so he well, just, oh, oh, Let me say why I think go he's ahead. a good inspiration. Then you can, then you can blow that up <laughs> with him and his niece. Tear him down. <laughs> <laughs> he did the peaceful protesting and – the peaceful protesting, a lot of people see as him just being a peaceful guy. It was more of a choice strategically because yeah. that's what worked at the time. What MLK did. Right. And, and right now, everything is, is provocative. Everything is, you know, poking the other people to get them to do something so that you can then get it on camera, stream it on social media and say, look at the fucking crazy person and how crazy. That, so they're going to generalize that everybody else who believes what they do is just like the craziest person in this group. And I, I think that not reacting to a lot of that, I think that being peaceful, I, I embracing it with love, even through the provocations, is our best opportunity in a lot of these ways. I think you can be aggressive peacefully. 
I don't think yeah. peaceful yeah. means you're passive. I think you can be mm -hmm. peacefully aggressive. And I think that's what Gandhi did. And I think that might be one, uh, one of the best strategies we have right now. And I think that if you actually look into some of the kind of cultural views of um, kind of some of the things Jesus said, like turn the other cheek, even though that sounds like just submitting yourself, mm -hmm. it was also standing there and forcing them to follow through on their violence. It was calling them out. Right. And so it's, it's, this is kind of a universal thing, I think. And so just to shit on Gandhi for just half a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not, I, there is this story about Gandhi who um, he was one who also w really f uh, focused on and tried to stay chaste and not sexual. And he decided to test himself with this. And one of the ways he tested himself was by sleeping naked next to his niece. Oh my God. And that's gross and bizarre. And uh, he said some good things, but that <laughs> don't do that. Don't don't take that from Gandhi, guys. Yeah, that is not the lesson from Gandhi that we yeah. want to take. It's like a Joe Biden lesson. Yeah, it's a Joe Biden lesson, definitely. I mean, human beings are often complicated, and you know, the, even the people we find to be heroes have dark sides to their character too. There yeah. is no human that escapes that, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So. We, glor we we glorize we glorize we we uh, um glorize. make idols of Glorify. people. Glorify, yes. thank you. Yeah. Mixing words. That <laughs> as though they're gods and yeah. unfallible. Everybody's fallible. Everybody's a history. Everybody has has issues. And instead of holding that against them, it really should be something that says, you know what, they're just like me. They're just like other people. Yeah. Not that Gandhi's yeah. anything like me. I would never do that. I would yeah. never do anything with Gandhi. You just say Gandhi. Then. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that people are people, they, they have issues, but they can yeah. also overcome and, and, and do inspirational things. And if you read Plato, Plato is the most mind warping, unbelievable thing. And then it's just mixed with like some really like shocking pedophilia. So you'd be like, oh my God, yeah. this is changing my life. Oh, what did I just read? It's, it's, it's like yeah. that the whole time. Well, yeah. it's. Even like this podcast episode itself, it started out with like <laughs> Superman hand jacking off tattoos, and then we come full circle around to talking about how much we love Jesus. Oh my so, gosh, that is yeah. so funny! <laughs> Everything is a duality. You just kind of yes. have to take take the good That's with the bad. Yeah. yeah, and oftentimes I am heartened by you know even the saints themselves. Like Saint Paul is one of the church's greatest saints. He was a persecutor and murderer of Christians. And then he became one of the greatest saints of the church. So, you know, if you feel like you're not, you know, doing so good, not doing so hot, man, the saints are people who can relate to you. That's yeah. one of the reasons that I struggle with the death penalty. I, I'm not a death penalty yeah. fan. I think people sometimes yeah. are need, like they it's I mean, I go back like I go back and forth. But sometimes it's just like, man, this person's fucked up. But like, I just don't yeah. know that we should be doing going that far with it. Yeah, I think if you already have them in jail, that uh, first of all, it's usually cheaper just to leave them in jail rather than the endless appeals. But um, if you believe in redemption, um, I mean, even Ted Bundy helped people. Uh, he helped to track killers. He helped to identify uh, traits among these people and to profile other killers. And yeah. they still went ahead and offed him, right? And uh, yeah. I mean, Ted Bundy would maybe be alive today, uh, but... I, I believe in redemption. So I think if you cut a man short, um, yeah. even if it's in prison, uh, what if 10, 12, 15 years from now, he would have been fully redeemed and helpful to other people. So, yeah. it, so it's on all levels, including that sort of utility, you know? Yeah. And I think yeah. that one of the biggest problems, and we talked about this with Q um, last week was that there's this, um, they want us to be violent. They want us to think violent thoughts. They want us to hate each other. And I've seen it happen in people that surprised me that they would have these thoughts. And those are the thoughts that we need to take, to use the Bible, to take captive to Christ. We need yeah. to, to take those thoughts and stop them in their tracks. And I think that one, one other thing that I would say is I think we need to be careful when it comes to everyone's a hero. Kyle Rittenhouse is a hero. Kyle Rittenhouse was a dumb kid in a bad situation. That's the truth of this, of the situation. It was a tragic situation. It was bad. I don't, but 
I think that people need to stop glorifying, glamorizing, and deifying people because yeah. that's a problem. That's something that I've had to break in myself. Yeah. There's a um, quote uh, by John Lennon, and I know John Lennon's not everybody's favorite guy, but this quote really speaks to what we're talking about right now, which is when it comes down to having the use of violence, then you're playing the system's game. The establishment will irritate you, pull your beard, flick your face, make you fight. Because once they've got you violent, then they know how to handle you. The only thing they don't know how, how to handle is nonviolence and, and humor. And this That's is great. something, yeah, um, I especially makes me think about people like the Christian martyrs who were carried off to violent deaths in front of the Roman people and ended up Christianizing Rome. Uh, Rome wanted them to fight. If you fight, we can beat you. We have victory over you. We've won because we're better. But when you joyfully go to your death, chanting, I get to be with my God, I'm so happy. They don't know how to handle that. Right. And it Christianized thousands and thousands. Every martyr they killed, um, everyone they cut down, every seed that fell down and died, wheat fields of wheat grew up behind it. And so I think that there's, danger in them making you play their game yeah. Turn the when they can cheek. make you vi when they yeah. can make you violent yeah if they bash they down somebody that. who's being peaceful but who's yep. standing their ground being peaceful you're the bad guy right there's no Period. spinning that there's no right. spinning yeah that. right no look one will look people. even even your political friend would look at you and go wow you're the bad guy <laughs> well i mean right. look at the people who were turned over to um, our particular ideas of freedom and liberty based on uh, Rand Paul being beaten up or Richard Spencer being sucker punched or that one guy who was wearing a costume being jumped. Like how many mm -hmm. people can justify watching someone being beaten who's done nothing but yeah. talked? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't mean their ideas were right, no. but violence Unprovoked violence is a very powerful way to get people to move away from their preconceived notions. And, and that's the challenge right now, too, because they recognize that and everything is a false flag. So if you say something is a false flag, you're crazy. But the reality is every they all know that if you go pretend to be somebody on the other side, mm -hmm. whoever they're fighting against, and you do something just outrageously stupid – that it's going to get all the attention and that everybody's going to look at what the Nazis did or look what the communists did. And that it, the first person says the false flag is just going to be written off as crazy. They all know that and they all do that shit. Now we see it time and time again. Yep. How many people who were at uh, January 6th were people there intentionally trying to incite crowds, which behave in mob mentality ways. Yeah. One guy starts breaking windows. Everybody behind him starts breaking windows. It just takes one person to step over the line. So how many people right. intentionally went there to step over lines to encourage people standing behind them to step that's over lines? All it lines? takes is a couple. Yeah. All it takes is a couple yeah. of that initiative. And that's, I don't want to say communist tactic, but it's its known as a communist tactic. The, the provocateur can be anybody can use that tactic. Though. But mm -hmm. I just don't know how you can look at a scene like that and, and not think that. I mean, I, I remember seeing seeing the guy dressed in all black break the window during one of the, I think it might've been Kenosha or, or one of the, the black lives matter yeah, protests or George Floyd last year. I, the I wasn't women's like, March in 2016, the ahead of the March ran a single guy dressed in black. It started bashing windows and, and, immediately. Yeah. We're not sitting here going, Oh, that's a women's March person. That's obviously a, a provocateur. I just, sometimes I'm baffled how people, can't accept that these provocateurs are doing that and they just always say well that's definitely somebody on the other side when it, it's probably a fucking cia or fbi agent doing that <laughs> yeah. shit the only way that they can't get you is if you refuse to play their game they can't they if they can't that. incite incite you to violence then you're not playing the game that they they can get you on. And um, this is why I think like the city of New York had a really big problem with their Orthodox Jewish community because that community valued um, obeying their God more than they valued obeying the city ordinances, but they couldn't get them on. They weren't robbing people. They weren't having violent mobs. 
they were literally just trying to stand there and worship. And so every time the city authorities came down and tried to break up these, uh, I guess, synagogue meetings, I'm not sure what their um, church services are called. It, the entire country was like, what the, <laughs> what the F dude? Yeah. What are you and doing? you know, you know, you, yeah. you can't do this. <laughs> and so they, you, if you don't play their game, they, they can't, they can't get you. Yeah. And I think that individualism is an important aspect of this. And I think that you can, that, so for me, when I see these situations, I run through my head, the verse that says, you know, this battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers in dark places or in, in the unseen realm. But you can even take that to the worldly level. I'm not fighting that communist or Nazi. Yeah. I am, first off, I'm probably fighting for the people above who want this to happen. But the battle needs to be above the individual because it's not individuals that are causing us this pain. It's systems and it's it's dark hands behind closed doors, shaking hands and doing deals. Mm -hmm. That's and why I hate labels. Communists, I hate fucking labels like that. Yeah. And if we if we can recognize that it's not the person that we're talking to on Twitter or in real life and that it's something bigger as we talked about AA, a higher power in a sense, mm -hmm. we're, we're starting to talk about the real problem that we're dealing with, which is not the person standing in front of us. That's just a symptom. So in light of that, um, because we are coming up around the two hour mark and I did kind of want to go round table before we started to do the close up and ask everybody, since we are doing a new year's episode, what kind of thing are you wanting to take into this new, new year being like um, a resolution maybe, or just something that, um, which is the normal question that we ask on the show, something going forward that's giving you hope in the, in the coming 2022. And I would, I would say I do, I was going to do, um, before we get, get into that, I think that I want to do a reflection and a, uh, forward, uh, thinking forward. So what yeah. are you taking in? What do you, what do you, what's positive that you're taking out? That oh yeah. That's sense. a good, that's a good one. Yeah. I'm with that. I think 2021 reflecting back in 2020 for that matter was very, it was difficult for everybody. This, this whole thing has been it threw everybody uh, a curveball, something that they've never experienced before and they've had to make adjustments. And I think 2020 was really when everybody got thrown off 2021 is, is when everybody has had to kind of, you know, adjust and we've ha had a new president. And I think as Biden has come in, it, it's, I think the divisiveness is only increased to a certain extent, at least in the media, I don't know. I think more people have, have waken up, but if you can get through this and you can stabilize yourself, you can get through anything. And even if they are trying to do a great reset, the fact is we do paint a picture of these people being these all powerful, almost godlike beings. Like they're uh, um, the, the super, what's the bald Superman villain? I can't, no, I can't remember. Lex Luthor. Like, like they're Lex Luthers and they're just all dominating. They're not Lex Luthers. Okay. They're not, they're human beings yeah. who are flawed and they're te this shit they're doing. They're testing and they're adjusting. They're testing and they're adjusting. And the reason they're adjusting is because we are not responding in the way that they hope for us to respond. And, and yeah. We recognize that and we realize that that is our power. Our, our power is not taking the bait and is acting as individuals and human beings. And I think that in 2021, while it's been difficult for a lot of people, a lot of people have also kind of been like, you know what? I might have been a Democrat hardcore. I might have been a Republican hardcore, but I've started to realize that this is a lot of bullshit that they're throwing at both of us. And I'm, I'm not going to just act in the stereotypical scripted way that they want Republicans. And I'm, I'm not going to fight the Republican or the Democrat. I'm going to fight this bullshit. And I think yeah. more people are fighting the bullshit now, regardless of which side they're on than there was in 2020. And I think that's a good thing. And I think anybody who is struggling and who has struggled, I, I think the fact that you've gotten this far is a good thing and you will continue to, to overcome all of this. And I think the white pill is that as long as we cannot allow the divide and conquer the they want to focus our they want to put us in a box and then they want to focus all of our mind and emotional and psychological energy on who we hate i mean that mm -hmm. is what they do 
all the yeah. fucking time. I just, yep. Sorry for my language, but that is what they want no, you to right. do. They want you to consume it. They want you to get on social media, and they want you to read. They want you to doom scroll and read all the posts about all the people you hate and type all the shit. That that is what they want you to do. I tell my friend that my friend was just like, I fucking hate the communists. I'm like, dude, you know that's exactly what Klaus Schwab has written in his little black notebook yes. is for you specifically to act that way. Right. Don't yeah. act. That's what he wants for you to. Sure. So if we recognize that they want us to do that, they want us to look at people and hate them and fight them them and not look at them it, it, that is my white pill more and more people are realizing that more and more people are realizing how powerful they are as an individual how much they can do i believe in people a lot and, and i'm sorry that i rant rant a little bit about this but i really do i think no. people are capable of amazing things every single person on the planet is capable of amazing things if they can overcome the psychological barriers that the propaganda has imposed upon them and those barriers are a fucking illusion all you got to do yeah. is step through them. And once you realize they're an illusion, you can do fucking anything that you want in this world. And Klaus Schwab can go fold up on himself. For, it doesn't matter. Once we all realize that, th then we got it. We take the, we take yep. the, we take the planet back. Yep. Right. Yeah. Love yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think during this time frame, um, you've alluded to this as well. Uh, these people are not these um, super intelligent, powerful people. Um you know, one of the most powerful people in the country right now is Kamala Harris. And you take a look at Kamala Harris. I mean, she's just such a joke, but like, I think she's a pretty typical bureaucrat. And so she's going to represent most of the people who think that they rule over you. And they're all about as smart as her. They're all, well, most of them are a little more charismatic than her, but, uh, uh, but she's a great example of what I think people are starting to see. And I think it's no matter what. There's no way that she has a 28% approval rating, which means that that you know supposedly 50% of the country that voted uh, uh, for her like her. That means that right. even a lot of those people are like, wow. So I think that faith in those leaders, um, I think that it is dwindling. I would hope that um, conservatives continue to view the government as not on their side, even when they have the presidency. Um, mm. I think that that the big problem for the right is that they, they kind of go, they're, they're like, Oh, whew, ah, you know, we, we made it. Our guy is in there. It's like, no, no, no. Every school board <laughs> hates you and wants to um, uh, turn your children against you. Uh, you know, every institution, they're all still being run by these progressives. They all still hate you. They're, things have just been paused or the brakes have been tapped by these Republicans. And that's about it. Right. So I have a feeling that a lot of conservatives are waking up, uh, like the Jesse Kelly types, uh, he's an interesting follow on uh, on Twitter. He's certainly a lot more based than most conservative and Republican types and mostly gets it. Uh, for the right to be also in a position of being the folks that are more anti-war, that is a really, really interesting turn that has happened really yeah. just in, in uh, the very recent uh, past. Uh, that's a very, very good sign. So I think that you mm -hmm. see a lot of these people who it's like, yeah, they're red, they're red states. But I do think that they're starting to see cracks in the entire system. <laughs> and I think that's why polling is so high when people say, do you want to break up? And they consider yeah. themselves to be the people that want to get away from all of that, right? So even, even any immediate belief that they have in the system or just going along, right, to get along, mm -hmm. they would still side with the people that want to get rid of that. That is very, very much um, a, a red pill for me. Um, on a personal level, I, uh, I want to buy a lot of land and I want to figure out, uh, how to do as little business, uh, with the government, um, really through the economy as is possible. Because if you look at what they're doing, what they're doing is they're actually dropping walls around you to participate in the economy. You know, yeah. if you're at your house or at your friend's house or something like that, life doesn't have to be so different, but all of the places that you like to frequent and do business with. That's where they're dropping walls around you. Oh, you won't do this. You can't pick up pizza. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you won't do this. You know, this. So I personally, I want to get away from as many of those things as is possible. I want to get a lot of land. I might put a couple of, a couple of head of cattle on that land uh, <laughs> along with some other things, uh, uh, you know, as well, just to be a little more self-sustaining, not to just drop out of the world, but um, I think that we could, we could pry ourselves off of uh, some of these things that sort of envelop us on a day day to day life. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I love Twitter as much, probably more than anybody here. 
And I use it a lot because I run my own business. So I'm in front of this computer all day long and I can tweet every 45 seconds if I want. <laughs> uh, but I also realize, like, yeah, but you're still handing power to these people, right? Like when you share a CNN uh, clip, even if it's a dog on it, you're still recognizing them as some kind of authority on information. So right. my hope for people in the near future is that we also figure out how to ditch all of the corporate press and move beyond them. Don't even give them negative attention. Just that, like the uh, block Sarwark uh, movement that uh, you know <laughs> that was maybe four or five months ago. I, yeah. I and like I, two or three years too late in the very it, least. no no I agree. And so once I blocked him, I was like, "Wow, well, was a really good feeling." And I've done it for a few other people as well. Like, who is this block? Who? Sar Nick Sarwark. Nick Nicholas Sarwark. He was a LP, LP chairman. Chair. Yeah. Oh right, I think I remember. And he does yeah. nothing but make the timeline shitty. And so blocking really him is like, <sighs> yeah. So really somebody started. And if that you if you hashtag. want to know the people who you need to mute in order to make your timeline wonderful, I'll tell you offline because I'm not looking to make All it right. easier. Great. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was an interesting thing. But uh, you know, again, on, on a personal level, I really want to figure out how to delete more and more of these things. That, uh, gosh, I mean, you know. Uh, like you said, it, it, they 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 want you doing this, and it's the yeah. reason that I quit Facebook uh, over a year ago. At this point, is so I was like, well, why would I say these horrible things about progressives when my own sisters are Massachusetts liberals? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like why am I saying this to my sisters? If I want to shit on Bernie Sanders, I'll just go shit on Bernie. Why I don't have to say <laughs> this in front of my right. sisters? You know, yeah. Um, yeah. So th that's that's my hope is to it's to further remove from that that thing that just kind of puts us all in this position. That's and, a great point. Like, like people fighting with their families and their their siblings yeah. and stuff like that. Like w you know, when you get to that point, it's like, wait a minute, maybe yeah. somebody's pulling the strings to try and make this happen. I, I purposely yeah. stopped and I and I readily admitted to each of my siblings. I'm like, look, nobody wants to hear my shitty opinions either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I understand yeah. that it um it it caused my mother and I not to speak to each other for over a year, Ooh. um because of the lockdown stuff. We disagreed about oh. it, and I was separate f separate from my own mother for oh. almost two years oh, because of it. Terrible. And that's not yeah. okay. It's yeah. not okay. And one point that I wanted to make, and this is an MCU Marvel quote, but uh, uh, Binkley made me think of it which is that talk about individualism and in um, civil war, uh, Captain America said my faith's in people, I guess individuals. And I'm happy to say that for the most part, they haven't let me down, which is why I can't let them down either. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that's, uh, if, if, if I were to describe what I took from this year and it's been a long road, this is not the first year I've thought of this but it's the year that I cemented it in a lot of ways. And Jessica did as well is exit is fine. In fact, exit is good. Getting away from the machinations of the elite falling into their national ideas, their global ideas and taking care of what is important in your life and affecting the lives of those around you directly, your community, your city, is far, far more important. Yeah. Yes. The only way to change the world, like I said, what Gandhi said was good, be the change you want to see in the world. If you don't right. start at the individual level, if you don't start with your family, with your house, with your backyard, you're not actually going to do anything because you are fighting an uphill battle against a, an enemy with far more weapons and far more power than you have. And right. so if you're able to to steal your family, to steal your community, to steal this smaller bubble of people, then you are able to actually fight against that. And it doesn't have to be this m mega huge political thing. No, yeah. we it's the things need, that you can control. We need, like you talked about with AA, we need to deal with the things that we can control. The prayer for mm -hmm. the serenity prayer in AA is apt. Wait. And if we yeah. are not dealing with us, if we are not dealing with the things we can control and we're going instead to this, the world stage, to the, the national stage, yeah. 
we're missing the most important parts of our yeah. life. And their whole philosophy yeah. is to try and make you think you cannot control what's going on. So they have to step in and, and be that control for you. That's fucking yeah. bullshit. Fuck them. All of yeah. you are capable of, of absolutely fucking anything. I believe in every single fucking person listening to this it, one step at a time. We can't fucking take down a global superstructure by ourselves and all at one time. That, that's, that's the myth of it. It's one step, one step at a time. They want us to be in this sense of demoralization. They want us to feel in Capable. But when we realize we can take control of the fucking thing is right in front of us and we can take a breath and, and not engage in what they want us to engage in, then they, they cannot fucking stop that. Yeah. yeah. And in and, and, and an I an irate minority can change the world. But if you don't start with yourself, with the, the smallest minority, which is mm -hmm. the individual, you are missing the boat. And mm -hmm. if you are trying to grasp for their mechanisms for their power structures before you deal with what you can deal with, you are wasting your yeah. time. You're just going to miss percent of the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, you made me think of something. Sorry, sorry to keep going on, but you're okay. They've convinced people that their identity is in politics. Yes. Yeah. There, is, there is a lot. There are a lot of yes. identity plays that yeah. it, yes, that that is the reason for their existence. Your, your reason for existence is not your politics. That, that, Yes, you want to fight for community and yourself and all, but that is not who you are. Who you are is, is is who you are, and they try and keep you at a distance from that. They try and prevent you from reflecting. They try and prevent you from growing into those things that, that you've always wanted to pursue. Pursue those things if you want to pursue. If anybody tells you that you can't pursue, just tell them to go fuck themselves. That's it. You just say, thank you, go fuck yourself, and I'm going to go find somebody who does tell me or, or does help me pursue what I can pursue because the, the, the boundaries that they set are – they're an illusion. You are not your politics. You are not your fucking yes. party. Yes. You are who you are. You, and you can yeah. do what you want. You just have to – it's just this fucking bullshit telling you that you can't. It's so – it's powerful and it's emotional, it's psychological. But yep. every individual ha has that power it, within yeah. them. And I know it's hard. It's really hard. It's hard for it's everybody. Hard. But it's like you got to take a breath and be like, what are these motherfuckers doing to us? These are fucking people yeah. they're turning me against. They're trying to tell me yeah. I can't do shit. I can do shit. You can they're do trying shit. trying to turn me shit. against my brother. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My right. sister. And, my and, mother. Exactly. And even, even five years ago, I was still a person that pretty much the only something that times that I thought about like big change was like the presidency. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, and then once yeah. you start thinking all the way down to no, 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 it's me and my family and going to the right small town, which is in the County over that I want to end up in, which is where mm -hmm. I grew up. Um, that is way more meaningful than all this other stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. the federal oh, government yeah. is going to do what it's going to do. And sometimes it's going to get the brakes tapped, but that's about it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, and it's still gonna do what it's gonna do. The most important place to wrest power from the federal government is individually, yeah. without a doubt. I mean, I home you school. can have people talk. Yes, homeschool. I mean, there yeah, are there, all yeah. our kids. Yeah. There are multiple avenues for this, and people like yeah. to downgrade it or say that there's only this way or that way. Yep. But the truth is, you can only control what you can control, mm -hmm. and if you're not taking responsibility for what you can control there's what are you doing and something that dent was saying is really um a way to make a palpable impact with that because if you were in your life creating a self-reliance that takes one single dollar out of the tax system if every person who pays taxes only took one single dollar out of the tax system by doing something for themselves, that's a hundred and ten million dollars that they don't have to bomb other countries with. Yep. And that's a single yep. dollar. Think about how much doing more for yourself, just right. just in having your own home garden, just in homeschooling your kids, just in all of the different ways that you can um, keep your income home. It, despite all of the ways they wrest it from you um, with the threat of violence, you do have these agoristic methods in yeah. which you can keep more of that central to your own home, your community, your own family, instead of relying in, on them for every thing. Especially you know? here in the um, South. <clears throat> Especially right. here in the South. And uh, I mean, even something as simple as uh, uh, hunting deer uh, is mm -hmm. amazing. 
I mean, yeah. one deer and your family could be eating meat for a couple of months, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah. just to think about things like that. And I actually, I actually don't hunt. We do live out in the country, but I've only got a couple acres right now. My brother-in-law mm -hmm. lives on 50 and he texts us every once in a while. I was like, Hey, you want another one? And we're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we pay for the processing because this dude yeah. lives so far out in the fucking woods. That's awesome. He he has thrown his kitchen window up before and gone ahead and taken one out in his backyard. I mean, that's in, here in South Carolina. That's not the weirdest thing that anybody's ever done. So we end up with a lot of venison and things like that too. It, it, but uh, that is that's a powerful thing to be able to do to feed your family outside of the economy, at least to a mm -hmm. large degree. It, it, and that's and not me saying I, I don't ever want to go to a grocery store. And I still love to go yeah. out and eat sushi and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I like to, I want to rely less on those people um, moving forward. And that's a big part of it is ra basically raising and hunting your own meat. The I see your finger up. Go ahead, Cam. No, I was just going to say, <laughs> and I, I, one thing I want to say is I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to say who this is or what they're saying. But if anyone elicits violence or retribution or tells you to do something or bring along a weapon to yeah. do to anything is not someone to be listened to. Yeah. Because they are falling fully into yep. the hands of the enemy. It's just trouble. It's and you're, just you're exactly. A, you're now you're something a, for them to react to. Yep. And to add on to um, more of what Dent was saying, in terms of um, how many people, like uh, diabetic care in this country is $47 billion a year. If you can keep yourself from turning into a diabetic, which is the fate of most people in their 60s at this point, yeah. this is billions and billions of dollars industry yeah. that they take in from this. So just keeping yourself healthy is fighting the system in a yeah. major way. A huge absolutely. way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I was pre-diabetic. I'm, I'm sure I've told you that before, but I was pre-diabetic. This was until about um, five years ago. And um, what I did was I started following a guy named Vinny Tortorich. And oh, he, I know about Vinny. Yeah. Okay. He, he, NSNG, no sugar, no grains. And I'm a pretty simple guy. And it was an easy thing for me to follow, just to uh, identify, okay, what are the foods that don't have sugar and grains? And I lost mm -hmm. all the weight, which I was about 30 pounds overweight. Uh, my sleep apnea went away in three weeks. Wow. And I lost all the weight in about seven months. That was just through diet. And then I started getting into intermittent fasting and things like that as well. Uh, it, it just speaking to what you're talking about and mm -hmm. totally mm -hmm. reversed all of those numbers. And my mm -hmm. health has never... Mm -hmm. Uh, been better. I'm 50 years old and I'm stronger than I was when I was in my twenties. Um, I can do up to 10 pull-ups, which for, <laughs> nice. just about, for just about anybody at any age is actually pretty good, but per, I can't do one. <laughs> well, yeah. So when I first yeah. started doing, um, when I first started doing it, uh, maybe two years ago, when I started getting into actually doing pull-ups, I really couldn't do a good one. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden mm -hmm. I was doing one and a half and all of a sudden I was doing three and a half mm -hmm. and five and a half. Mm -hmm. And so I do anywhere. You know, I actually do two sets to failure, but my first set is like eight to 10. And it does, I know that's going to sound super weak to like all those people. No, out there no that that's like it. awesome. Yeah. actually. Like, 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 I, I, think, yeah. I think you're illustrating like a great point here because this applies to everything we've been talking about. And you can't take down a global superstructure in one fell swoop. It, it right. takes small steps individually, one step at a time, taking control, realizing you can do what you can do and you don't have to rely on them. You don't you don't yep. need them. And, and it's the same thing when it comes to exercising and dieting. Everything yeah. is you want it to be better it, it, immediately. Yep. But it takes one step at a time. It takes one day at, at a time. And then suddenly you're running a marathon when you start off running, yep. you know, to your mailbox. Right. They're taking yeah. they're taking taxes on those cigarettes you smoke. They're taking taxes on uh, the weed that they're trying to get everybody uh, yeah. normalized and get everybody hooked on. And I don't yeah. have anything personally against weed, but the normalization of being high all the time. Yeah. There's reasons for that kind of thing, you know, and um, they. They want us sick and they want us dependent and they want right. us um, stuck inside of our houses. All of this vaccine COVID shit has been entirely to, you know, fund Pfizer, fund Moderna. Yeah. 
These are huge contributors to uh, uh, political um, campaigns. All of this stuff is interconnected. So the more you can extricate yourself from this type of system, you don't have to do it completely. Still, you know, I, I, I enjoy a beer now and again, but I'm just saying like, um, don't make it your whole life. Just, just take a couple of dollars out of their coffers. And just yeah. $1 from every taxpayer in this country is $110 million that they don't have to oppress people with any longer. Yeah. And, and we can do more than a dollar. Everybody yeah, can do more than a dollar. And you are far more powerful than they want you to believe because mm -hmm. they want you to believe you're unsafe. They want you to believe yep. that you can't provide for your family without them. They want you to believe yep. that you can't protect yourself from foreign threats when foreign threats probably wouldn't even come about if it wasn't for them. Right. Like they're, You are far, far more powerful than they want you to believe. Mm -hmm. And that is something to take away. Um, Jessica. Yes. What is, uh, I mean, we've, we've kind of all said something in some sense of what we are taking from this year. Is there anything specific for you that you're taking from this year? Yeah. Um, your connections to people are incredibly important. Your community is your biggest resource. I mean, we can talk about deer hunting and chickens and gardening all you want, but it's your community that's going to keep you alive when the shit goes down. You know, so make your connections, keep them strong. And all of those family members that you've built up grudges with over the past couple of years because yep. of politics, yep. go and apologize. No one ever died choking on their pride. Yep. I got to tell Buy you, I took jerky. Buy them some beef jerky. I took um, communion for the first time um, since I was a teenager this year. And one of the thing, one of the requirements before you take communion is that you not have conflicts with anybody. You don't have grudges with your brothers. And so I had to go around and eat a lot of crow, you know, apologize to people I didn't think that I was wrong about. And you know what? It is a liberating experience ah, yeah, not to have those grudges on my head any longer. And I've rebuilt my relationship with my mother. I mean, I can't tell you how valuable that is. That's amazing. That's really yeah. yeah. And so I would just say people make those connections again, the, the, the people that um, I have around me, my church, I didn't have a church community when I started this year. And I do now. And that's extremely important to me. I didn't have my mother, you know, so just, Eat, eat some crow. All those people you fought with on Facebook, go go make it up to them. You know, it's yeah, worth yeah. it. It's completely huge. worth it. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. It's that pride. And yeah. it's that pride fucking with fucking you. Fucking with you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> The, uh, um, the other thing is, like Cam was saying, if someone encourages you to show up to a political event with a gun or to do violence, don't listen to that person. I agree. And there's something I'd like to add to that. If you set out a goal for yourself, a resolution, you're going to quit smoking, you're going to lose weight, you're going to have a New Year's resolution this year, and someone tries to make you feel shitty about improving your life, don't listen to that shit. That shit's not a person to listen to either. Improve yourself. Make yourself happy. Reach for goals. If you don't have goals, you know, then you're the walking dead. Okay. Sure. So paint, go, go paint, you know, go um, do skateboard, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, go do it. Life is fleeting. It happens so very fast. So, you know, make up with the people that you're fighting with and do that thing that you're afraid of doing yeah you can always be a gym teacher yeah you're you can back. still yeah. be a gym teacher that's yeah. true yes, yes. yeah uh, the, hey the, so the greatest uh, uh gym teacher joke of all time <laughs> so, oh god what is the uh, the super quirky guy from the 80s and the 90s um i can't remember richard simmons uh, no, he's a comedian. No, he uh, didn't say the super sexy guy. He said the super quirky guy. <laughs> super quirky guy. But I, uh, uh, oh, uh, oh my gosh, I, I can't put his, I can't put his name. I'm a little tired. I'm so sorry. Uh, but his joke, he said, my gym teacher was by and large. You talking about Gilbert Godfrey? No, not Gilbert. Emo um, Phillips. I love Emo Gilbert. Phillips. That's an Emo Phil ah. Phillips joke. But that's the whole joke. Is my gym teacher was by and large. And he just sits there. <laughs> that's funny. That might be my favorite joke. Of his. Yeah, that's great. great. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I would say 
for me personally, going into the new year, besides limiting my sugar, which is going to be something that I'm doing. um, In addition to that is this year has been, there've been some very good things. I think that this show, the way we've changed, the way we've done things differently has been very, very much a little piece of hope for me, but things have been bad and hard and they still are here on December 29th and not November 23rd, technically at this point. But what I've been learning is how to have faith Mm -hmm. and learning how to have faith and how to trust God, how to trust the people that say they love you is a hard lesson. And um, it's, 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 I'm not, this is not going to sound super hopeful, but I am walking into this new year with faith. I'm walking into this new year blindly and trusting, and it's going to be hard. It has mm-hmm. been hard and it will be hard. And that's, that's fine. These are the fires that will refine me. And I'm, I'm happy for those fires, despite the pain that comes with them. And so with, yeah. for me, I am walking into this new year with faith. And I hope that anyone at this moment who has been devastated by COVID, really, the government response, will be able to find that faith. Mm -hmm. Will be able to find that unshakable trust and joy that I'm struggling with and, and wrestling with right now. And at the end of the day, it's it's the end of the year, and years aren't special. Uh, January 1st and December 31st are a minute apart. And so years truly aren't special, but we imbue them with specialness. We imbue them with That's hope. And we imbue them with joy. We imbue them with this ability to do anything. And that's good. Yep. It's a good resolutions may be faltered on, may be forgotten. But if you can walk into every day with that resoluteness, that strength to change your life, it doesn't matter if it's December 31st or July 4th or what hmm. a day, what a day to choose. Um, it doesn't matter what the day is. Your life is one day away from being changed completely. And you're in charge of that. Yeah, I, absolutely, Cam. It's a, every day, and it's hard to do this when you're down and out because you're like, I don't, when you're down and out, it, it can be like, I don't even want to feel good. I want to feel bad. Uh, you yeah. don't want to do yeah. shit. But like, even if you do the, this this trick, you got to hook a hen and you, gotta, you put a pencil pen in your mouth and it forces you to. to your your face to go in the smile <laughs> position it literally changes okay. your physiology yeah. if you stand up and you put your head up for three minutes so if you're down and out and you're just beating yourself up if you just force yourself to do that it will change your physiology and it will change the course of your day and will change what you think you're capable of that day and you don't have to take shit on all at once it's one at a time what can i do right now to make myself feel better and i struggle with this all the fucking time i, I it's it's tough yeah. it's not easy it's fucking hard uh, uh, but it, 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 you can do it. And you remember there's other people like you thinking like you and yeah. that everybody's in this fight together. And it's, uh, you know, AA, I think applies to everything. Really. I, I think if everybody applied to kind of AA one, one day at a time, you control, you right. control mentality. I think it, oh, it's yeah, very, very right. helpful. And, and Cam, Jessica, you guys, you guys got a great show. You guys are, I'm glad you let me come here and, and railroad and sometimes. And, and uh, you guys got a great, great show and you, you have great guests on great interviews and you're doing like a fantastic job and you have a great attitude mm-hmm. and, and you stick with it and you're committed and so uh, uh even when it, even when shit's tough man you guys are on the right track i think you guys got a fucking awesome show and i, I, I love it it's gonna get huge it's, it's continuing to get huge thanks brother god i hope so it, no it is <laughs> man i'm serious dude you got like you, you guys are good you guys are really good yeah thanks man appreciate that 
Yeah. And I appreciate you having me on too. It's, it's fantastic. Of course, this is really, it's like the only show that I do, but I'm so glad that it's that show also, you know, I'm, I'm actually not that big into podcasts and stuff either, but uh, it's always so, so, so great to be here with you guys. When we decided we were going to do a, a New Year's party episode, it was like, who are our two like fun people, our most fun friends and Binkley and Dent. And we have the oh. most fun with you guys. <laughs> like, awesome. It's a laugh a minute. You know, we, we can joke with you guys. Then we can also get serious and talk about mm -hmm. Jesus. Like, it's awesome. Yeah. So we yeah, appreciate I, you guys, too. I really love the fact that, like, for Dent, there's this. So I'm going to tell you what my favorite thing is about you instead of asking you about that. Oh, <laughs> it's a change. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, my favorite thing about Dent is his overwhelming optimism. This is a man that sees the good in things that I don't see the good in. This is a man who saw Trump and didn't just have the lulls I did, but also was able to articulate and respect the change that he had despite all of the bad the fact that that dent will talk about how his tax bill was changed by mm -hmm. trump and he was able to pay off his debt yeah. how he was able to change his own life because of the workings of this very very flawed individual that's He's very good. useful information too like that's that's cool sorry i didn't mean yeah that's really cool but it's 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 good because it's it's people that are able to see the 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 silver lining, the light in the yeah. darkness, the little bit of the little glimmer of hope in the darkness that inspire me to be able to continue on. And the fact that Brad Binkley, no matter what I say, will yes and it and continue <laughs> it, and we will laugh and we will have fun and we will go into the deep places is invaluable to me. It's like I have a brother. I have two brothers, technically. Um, I have I have brothers. I have a sister, but I have so much joy talking to Brad in Patreon on the Propaganda Report side of things. People talk about how um, Brad's angry energy against these things is what they miss when I'm with Monica. That's fine. I don't have that angry energy. But the fact is, every time I talk to Brad, I'm left with hope and laughs is unendingly positive for me. Yeah. And I appreciate the fact that both of you have the ability to recognize and laugh at the absurd, to see life in its darkest points and to find the little bits of humor in it. Like what Jessica said about John Lennon's quote, if we can laugh at the enemy, we've won. I had a girlfriend in high school who uh, did her older. Yeah, I had, I had <laughs> one. I was quite no, a lady did. killer. Yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> but her her older sister had a boyfriend who was terrified of her of her father. And he, I would talk and laugh with her father. And he goes, yeah, I'm terrified of Han. How is it that you have any kind of relationship with him? And I said, I made him laugh. The moment you make yeah. someone laugh is the moment that you tear down their walls and they see you as human. Yeah. 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 And that is the, that is the primary fight. I think we have against the Illuminati and I against agree. the horrible people on Twitter. If we can elicit laughter, of the underlings, they lose their power in a moment. Yeah, you know, Bob Wood used to say, you know, Bob, Jessica, and Bob came I on our show. You know, you yep. and Bob also came. You might have been there too, Dan. I know we've been on another show together, and I can tell that I, I like you, Dan. You always, you're cool, you're chill, and you're funny. And I think this is at least the second time we've been on a show together. Yeah, so right back at time. you, man. And, and it was, it was with these guys. So yeah, yeah. It, it might have been, might have been more than once actually, because. Um, you guys did a show one time. There was like nine people on the show. It was yes. yeah, that was yeah. hundred. Yes, that, yes, I remember yeah. that one. As soon as you had a good idea of something to say, 
you couldn't find a way to get it in there. You so you would just miss the whole segment. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, like, so Bob said said he used to say it with improv, and, and this, it applies and everything. Uh, um, it's just like you, you can take what you do seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. Right. Yeah. And, I agree. and that's just you gotta have fun with shit. Otherwise, what's the point? You know. Yeah, and you gotta let stuff just kind of roll off you sometimes too. Yeah, you know? and like, yeah exactly. Not, you, know? not, you can't just keep taking everything on and have it weigh right. you down. It's you like know? when you're in high school, everything just like you're like, oh, you just yeah, take all these ending. hits and shit. But now it's just like it doesn't fucking matter. You know? No, exactly. I, I really, ever since I've been in my forties, it's been a lot easier just to take stuff and go, eh, you know, just yeah. yeah, let it just let it keep going. You know, it's like all right, yeah. not gonna let that weigh me down. So. Yeah. And I will say, I need to move on to Jessica, who, at the beginning of this year, in February, took on the role of co-host on my show. This girl has more Twitter followers than me. She has, I think, more clout than I do. It's amazing. <laughs> I don't know why. But, <laughs> well, I'm a boy. But you you have a an audience that I wish I had, but I don't. And so you bring that along with you. And I think the thing that I appreciate the most about you is it's twofold. One being that you are the ultimate searcher. You are the person that I've found who is most interested in finding knowledge and truth and walking it out to the point that you're uncomfortable, to the point that you're unhappy with it and wrestling with it. Mm -hmm. And that is a kind of personality trait a kind of um way of being that is lost on most people and i deeply appreciate that because you ask me questions that i don't have the answers to and when i don't have the answers it causes me to stretch it causes me to rethink the things that i have thought and the things that could have been wrong or could have been right and i have to do the due diligence because i feel a responsibility to tell you the truth in as concise and as accurate a way as possible. And so it stretches, yes, thank you. it stretches the way that I talk because mm -hmm. I am, I'm, I am long winded and that's usually because I'm looking for a laugh along the way, but you, 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 uh, you forced me to be succinct. You for forced me mm -hmm. to, to think through these things and to come to a conclusion, whether or not you agree with it, whether or not uh, your your priest agrees with it, <laughs> the fact that you respect me enough to ask is a gift to me. The fact that anyone trusts me enough to ask me questions about the ultimate, about the eternal, touches me in such a way that you'll never understand and I, i'm sorry that i'm getting emotional here no, dude, it's a, it's new year's eve or whatever yeah. 30 yeah dude, yeah it's great i love you, hearing this <laughs> you have made it so that i don't i mean i'm not one to just take things as they are but you've stretched me beyond that and i think that that's the secret sauce in our show is that you highlight questions that i wouldn't think to ask and then that i now have to answer and so I have the, 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 I have to go through the rigor of knowledge, through wisdom, through reading, through understanding in order to succinctly and correctly try to explain where I have landed. And so you, more than anyone this year, and I mean this, have pushed me forward in my walk with God through my understanding of Christianity through my understanding of the world, through all sorts of things, and made me re-examine things. And so whether or not you feel like I, you're taking up too much of my time, it is yeah. invaluable to me. You are invaluable to me. And even if our relationship, our friendship, our show goes to hell in the next two months, <laughs> You have left me with such an impact that I will never forget you. And I need you to know that. I love you. I love, I love you too, Brad. Too. I love Dent. I love all I of love you. I love you too, man. Because you, you guys. are you guys. stretching me 
in testing me. All of you are. You're test Brad's testing me comedically, and I love that. That's exciting to me <laughs> because I'm like, oh shit, I've got to say something funnier, and I can't. But yes, that's you can. Funny. You're funny, dude. But that's that's where my brain goes. That's how I grew up with my brother, and so you are a brother to me in that way because I need that. Dent is like I, I wouldn't say you're an uncle. I feel like it's closer. It's like an older. It's like I have a half brother who's like 14, 14 years older than me, but he <laughs> he's not going to watch this. You're a disappointment, bruh. <laughs> oh. But Dent is the one who keeps me hoping because he's done things that I haven't done yet, and I know I can do. Not because it's like, oh well, a Dent can do it, so I can do it. I'm oh he's yo know, if anyone can do it. He's got a calm because, confidence. You can see it in him. And I'm saying, this man, the way he's conducted himself, the way he's made himself successful, the way he has connected with the people he's connected with, proves to me that, not that I can do it, but that I can sure as hell tr strive to do it. And I appreciate that. Uh, um, thank you for the, the kind words. I mean, I think the best way I could boil it down is... Uh, um, Gosh, I mean, just, you know, take, taking opportunities and um, no matter what my ideology was either, by the way, which was pretty much stock conservative until fairly recently, but always yeah. looking for more freedom to do what the fuck I want to do. Um, things like, you know, getting married in the 90s and my wife and I knowing right then we did not want our kids to go to public school. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah. Who cares if I was just some stock conservative Republican? I damn well knew that my kids were not going into those propaganda machines. Yeah. Uh, just making those decisions along the way. And it, it gets easier once you start realizing you can make a hard decision up front and it makes life so much better after that. And that's where I ended up, you know, I mean, just like with owning, owning the business and things like that as well. Um, you know, taking taking risks and being able to roll uh, opportunities into success. Um, yeah, it, it's it's an amazing feeling. And uh, again, I, I, I thank you for the kind words. And I also agree that I'll put it this way. If I can do it, anybody can do it. It had nothing to do with like education. I have no education. Um, so it had nothing to do with education or anything like that either. Um <laughs> Anybody can, uh, one, one of the, the things that I like to say is um, you want to be just smart enough to have a good idea and just dumb enough to think that you can pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there, are awesome. yeah. Who, there are people who uh, are, I'm, I'm not uh, some kind of uh, high intellectual. It, there are people who are so Me neither. intelligent that it actually does harm to their life because I have a very good friend mm -hmm. as an example. This dude was like the greatest um, audio engineer, okay? But he had his own studio, and he was a terrible uh, he was a terrible businessman. <laughs> and um, so, really, he just never really made any money at it and things like that. And here's the yeah. here's the thing: that guy would sit there and tell me, "Oh, I have this plan to start like an audio engineering school and like all of this kind of stuff." And here, the problem is, he was so highly intelligent that he could also sort of like see the failure in it down the road. And so he wouldn't really get down the road with it, which is why I say you want to be mm. smart enough to have a good idea, but just mm -hmm. dumb enough to think you could actually pull it off. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's I a good, that. that's a good combo. And I feel blessed that that's me. I, I'm just smart enough to have that idea and dumb enough to go, let me keep trying at that. Yeah. And, and, and it pays off. So I think everybody yeah. should maybe, maybe consider that. And it, but it, uh, I'm also saying that I've never been jealous of people who have like insanely high IQs um, because I think that they struggle in a different way yeah. uh, than I struggle and I can handle my right. 123 or whatever it is. I can handle that. Uh, but <laughs> I know a lot of people who are like up in that 160 range and they're just kind of a mess dude, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and, and, and what I'm getting at is that all three of you, and it, it was no mistake for us to have you guys on tonight is you all believe in me in a different way. 
Dent, you paid for this microphone. You sent this to me. You believe in my voice. And that touches me. For some reason, Brad thinks I'm funny, and that that touches me. And I think you're yeah. more than funny, though. I think you're funny, but I I, I think that you're um I think you you're easygoing. You're cool to work with. You're smart, and uh, I, I think that you're committed and you do a great job. And, I th- and, and Jessica, the, the same thing. I, I you're. You're you're an open book. Uh, the reason you're popular on social media is not just because you're you're a woman. That I mean, certainly you're 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 a <laughs> pretty woman. That helps. But it helps. also, you also have a point of view and you're vulnerable. You put your story yes. out there, and, and yes. that's not easy. That's very difficult to do, yep. and you, you do it. And I think that that helps a lot of people. You guys both have a lot of that's really great qualities, and you're you're consistent about your show, and as that's and you're just cool. You guys are cool. <laughs> awesome. I've always yeah. wanted to be cool. <laughs> Listen, you, you two, uh, you two uh, I, uh, have, there's a depth of knowledge, like even, even historically oh, yeah. in, in, in through uh, even like theology and things like that. I have none of that. So I think it, yeah. that's why it's interesting. Like you guys will have like Thaddeus Russell on your show and it's like, yeah, Thaddeus Russell's not running circles around you. No. That's no. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, y'all's knowledge when it comes to the theology is, right. is so beyond mine. It's really interesting. Right. It, but but also good historical context in other uh, uh, avenues as well. And so to see the things that you guys are able to do in that context, it's like, I, I don't have any of that. And just God bless you. Uh, you've really rolled it into something real. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. And, uh, but no, and, and that and that's the thing is, I, I have been th- so this is episode one hundred and twenty four. I do not believe in myself for a hundred and twenty four episodes. I don't, but I freaking grind. And if I hadn't met Jessica. When I did, I probably would have stopped by now because she believes somehow that I have I and, and you know I I'm sure I have knowledge to give, but I truly believe that she from what the conversations we've had, she feels that I have wisdom to impart, and that I she can disagree with me if she wants that's fine, but. <laughs> But I feel like if anyone feels that I have any wisdom to share, that is one of the highest marks I can receive. I want um, I want people to be who they are. I don't need everybody to be me. I'm already me. I need everybody to be who they are. And I am deeply interested in who you are. And I think that a that mess. applies. A fucking mess. Everybody's a mess. <laughs> Everybody yeah, is a mess. Yeah, yeah. We're, all, we're all messed up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, all we're all great. We're all great. We're all messed up at the same we're, time. We're all great. We're all, we're we're all, all a mess. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's just you know, and um, the the kind of people I'm attracted to, and the kind of people that I want to be around, are the people who are authentically themselves, and don't want to make everybody else into them, because they're already them. And that's who I appreciate. And so that's why I'm partnered up with you. That's why we have Brad Binkley and Dent on our show when we decided who would we like to hang out with. It's these guys. And so, yeah. Yeah. Now that we've made it super gay, <laughs> um, we are coming Whatever. up. I feel on the, good. We are. Yes. I feel good yeah, and gay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel, yeah, yeah, super, yeah. Gay in the not derogatory way. Like the oh, of course. super gay, super gay way. I, I grew yeah. up in the nineties. And so gay is always derogatory to me. I'm just joking. I <laughs> not in the left gold. earring way. I know the joke. <laughs> hey, no. Right earring. It's the right earring. Yeah. It's the right earring way. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've got, I've, I've, I've got the I grew up in the eighties. Trust me. It's the right earring. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that the, when, the gay earring? I just wear them <laughs> both like as many as possible. Yeah. That's where you just confuse everybody. <laughs> and they think they, you must be bi or something. <laughs> when my wife Maybe. told me that she thought it would be hot for me to have an earring, I was like, it's only going in the left ear, honey. Oh, uh, I thought you were like, well, what about this tongue ring? 
No, I'm not that gay. <laughs> <laughs> so we are nearing three hours, which I think may be our longest episode. Oh, goodness. And I think wow. that's because we love you. Um, love but you I feel like I need to tell people where to find you if they're interested. If if you made it this far, this and is where you find to you these guys. If you yes, did. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so if you'd like to find Dent on Twitter, which I have imposed the name Dent on him because, you know, I'm I'm a tyrant. I saw he named name me too. At Dent, I named almost well, I mean, I did name Brad. Bradley Lee, Bradley Lee, Bradley Binkley. Lee Binkley. Yeah, that's your <laughs> Civil War general name. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> one of the highest compliments I ever received in college was when I grew when I started growing out a beard. People started telling me that I looked like a Civil War general. I was like, <laughs> hell yeah! Um, when but they... if you want to find Dent on Twitter, okay. the reason why I call him Dent and not by his first name is because his at is at dent in the world and i the first name that i hear from you is the first name that i use for you so that's why i call brad binkley that's why i call jessica jessica i don't call her jesse but that's just how my brain works you're gonna have to deal with it but dent is a wonderful person who when i said i am unhappy with my microphone i can't i can't control it as much as i used to be able to he sent me this Shure MV7, which is nice. fantastic. It's amazing. It's so good, and um, I am honored that I have it. And so if you want to buy – like he, he gave microphones to Michael Malice. He gave microphones to uh, Dave Rubin, to Bridget Phetasy. This dude has taken care of some of the people that he believes in in some sense, I think he probably believes in them more than me. Yep. But yeah, Michael has the same mic you have. Nice. Love it. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to buy a microphone from him, because that's how he pays for his uh, awesome. ten-person family, uh, you can go to Zenbro ZenProAudio.com and grab I like a Zenbro. I think I gotta yeah, change I'm saying, it now. Man. I gotta go Zenbro. Zenbro. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever told you guys this, but if I ever drink a little bit more than I'm used to, I become very sweet. And so you got the sweetness tonight. No one, yeah, no, one the... no one noticed. Um, <laughs> um Zenproaudio.com. He sells microphones. He'll take care of you if you go to his Twitter and you ask him questions about your specific setup, the room that you're in. He is knowledgeable. He'll tell you not to use the damn pop filter because you don't need it. Um, Nobody he's, needs a, he's, he's a great resource at Dent in the World. ZenproAudio.com. Um, Brad, who I just adore. Um, he is the other half. You saw Monica for a few minutes here. He's the other half of the propaganda report which I occasionally, when they need a day off, show up in and surprise both of them with the fact that I may have some good ideas every now and then. A lot of um, good ideas. <laughs> but they do a great show, and they their entire shtick, which is the least nice way to say that, is they <laughs> cut through the bullshit propaganda, and they tell you what is being reported, what is real, what is false, and how to look past what the corporate media sends your way. And so if you want to go to the prop report.com, it's on every podcatcher. They have a Patreon, patreon.com slash the prop, uh, prop report, propaganda report, propaganda report. Uh, they, they do two versions of their show, which I've edited. So I know this, they have their, um, essentially 30 minute, 45 minute regular show, which I don't know what you're calling it now. It's a DNB, and then we call the uh, other DNB XR because it's right. Uh, uh, yeah, I knew <laughs> about the XR, the but I wasn't blast. sure what yeah. you called the right. just the the regular show. But if you go on their Patreon, you get forty five plus plus. It's usually plus minutes of extra conversation, analysis, and gut instinct from these two. And they're wonderful about this. These are these are people who are very capable of seeing past the BS. So check out the propaganda report. And also, if you just want to hear Brad's thoughts occasionally on Twitter, 
It's Freedom Act. It's at Freedom Act Radio. Uh, so check him out there. I think that's all with you guys. Is there anything else I need? No, to that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's... Aren't you on Patreon? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash Propaganda Report. And you guys are on Patreon as well. Yep. Yeah, we're on mm-hmm. Patreon, and both of us are on Rockfin. There is a, a show that me and Monica are talking about uh, doing kind of exclusive on Rockfin. I haven't, we haven't gotten to the details yet, but that will, that is something we're talking about. Beyond that, I won't tell you guys to get off the screen this time because <laughs> you just have to deal with it. I have no upcoming shows to tell you about because you will have to pay attention to my Twitter and Jessica's Twitter to see what's coming in the new year. Um, we have not booked everything yet. That's the secret. But we pre-recorded this so that we could get a vacation. Um, yeah. But still deliver content to you guys. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, please like and subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, bump us up in the algorithm. That'll really help us get to a point where we can have super chats and other fun stuff for you and guys. Ad- and, and stupid ads that play before mid rolls, whatever. I don't I don't want to bore you with that. But if you want to listen to it and watch it without that. Patreon's the way to go. Right. Um, but. I will let you guys know what's coming out. I one of the things that Jessica's pressed me on and I've loved because it it stretches my creativity is I have new logo elements, new video elements that I'm working on right now. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, I I sent them to Dent so Dent can speak to this, but the new intro, I'm changing some stuff around and lo- oh, shit looks tight. Yes, it's going to be fun. The new year. (laughs) We got a lot of new stuff coming up in the new year, guys. It's going to be more, uh, you know, interesting guests off the wall. We're we're still the mad ones. We're still bringing in the crazy folks. So keep keep in touch for 2022. It's going to be a blast. 2022. (laughs) Crap. Um, But beyond that, uh, like we've mentioned before in this show, we do have a Bible study. Just message me on Twitter. My DMs are open. Like an idiot, my DMs are open. Just send me send me a message. I'll send get you hooked feet. up on that. Um, don't send feet uh, unless you're <laughs> a very pretty one. I I I think that the the female leg is completed by the foot, and don't mind it as much as the other dudes do. Like what the you hate feet? What's wrong with you? Um, <laughs> The woman is a whole package, and you know what? You can't split it up. Cam. Um, well, you can if you're sadistic. Yeah, yeah. Ted Bundy did. <laughs> but I'm not Ted Bundy, so you know yeah. what? If you're if you're a, an attractive woman, I I, I won't mind. Um, so we do have sponsors. Run your mouth coffee. Rymcoffee.com. Get some of their bourbon aged coffee. It really is good. I'm not lying to you. Uh, rymcoffee.com promo code the mad ones we have yeah. mugs i'm very happy about these mugs and so you awesome. can drink the coffee out of our mugs and you can you can drink coffee with us every morning if if you so desire so if you want one of those mugs the mad one shop.com no no the mad one shop uh we have shirts on uh the mad one we are the mad ones.com slash store we're on rockfin patreon um everything we're on odyssey just search for us you'll find us um if you want me at cam harless on twitter if you want jessica at soup canarchist and that's all i have i think that's all i've said that's it so it's good to go brad dent i've said this many times but i love you thank you for coming on the show thanks guys thank we're you we're definitely me. going to do it love you guys. multiple yeah. times in the new year just so you know, <laughs> hit us up. <laughs> um, but beyond that, those who are listening, uh, you have a chance to be in li- a light in the world. So uh, light it up. Mm-hmm.